Welcome. You've reached dweebros.com. We, we got the slash URL. Slash YouTube. That's what it should be. Oh, dweebros.com slash YouTube. Yeah. We bought YouTube. Yeah. Uh, we thought was, they were getting out of control with all the content um, control. Well, you know what happened to you. <laughs> uh, Last podcast, Little kids China, were watching bad videos, right? China, there was so much censorship stuff going. Did Hong Kong buy YouTube? We lost Jacob. Yeah. But then we... Bought YouTube back. Got on one knee, remember? And we knelt and we said... We apologize. Yeah, I mean, look. You can't make fun of... Oh, they're calling right now. They're watching. Says, Sorry. So China is calling, um, and China, free Hong Kong, not free Hong Kong. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, do you me know? Either. I don't know. don't know. Do you know? Do you know? I don't know. Do you know? How was I supposed to afford my child? So the- we got bills to pay. We got a mouth to feed. Another mouth. Another We've got a. BB, a baby. Yeah, a BB. A BB. A yeah. b- BB. It looks like it's not really hungry. It looks malnourished. Have you guys been thinking? That is not hold a person. On, no, 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 no. That's that is a tool, Jacob. Oh. That's not a person. That's a tool. Okay, Die Hardman. This is a tool, Sam. <laughs> this is a tool. I love This the, is not a person, Sam. I love the voice actor they got to play oh I know uh, it's great Guillermo del Toro oh it, it I was a little worried because sometimes if you this is gonna sound stupid because you do this anytime you make a CGI character but I was worried that it would feel like a voice disconnected from a body yeah cause uh, I mean cause you know that person's voice yeah like, like Mads it. played the character and did the voice uh I, we're Norman, talking about Death Stranding. Nor- yeah. yeah, Death Stranding. If you're not aware, it was a game that <laughs> came out. Heard. If you don't know what the F that is... You're being living yeah. on the rock. So, but Norman Reedus like, did the voice and the mocap. But like, yeah, like Guillermo del Toro gave his likeness... Wait, what I'm saying doesn't make any sense. He gave his likeness, <laughs> but not his voice. Yes, okay. So but, but not his performance either. Not his performance either. Okay. Somebody had to act... Watch, so someone watch got in Guillermo's hours skin. Hours and hours of tape. Of Garamond, how he moved, how he did interviews. Man. That's so weird. I think they mastered. I just want to say, stuff. I really appreciate. Let's just dive right into Death Stranding. But one thing right off the bat, I really appreciate about <laughs> Death Stranding. Like, well, I'm back and this is what we start with. One thing I appreciate is, and I've, I'm like 35 hours in, is every single freaking trailer that they showed. Yeah. It actually made it in the game because they were showing all these trailers yeah. over the different game awards and the different E3s. Yeah. And I had a point where they showed one that was like a redo of a, of a prior one. And I was like, that stuff we saw early on, that was conceptual. That was yeah. not, that is not going to be <laughs> yeah. in the game. Like I reserved myself to like, yeah, we're going to look back on stuff and say, ooh, that was weird. Yeah. yeah you could tell they were hinting. Every single yeah. freaking one has been in the game. Yeah. Like I hit something last night. I just started chapter seven, and it, and I won't say which one, but like one of those that I love, one of those trailers I love with Guillermo del Toro and the baby, yeah. and like it's in the game, like yeah. right exactly as it was. It looks better than it looked. Yeah. So points to Kojima. Not that I had any doubt. He, so you did he not can play make this a heck of a trailer, no, but he I've, also makes a heck of a game. I'm, I'm avoiding it for reasons. Now, I thought it was you or was it Zach? I thought it was you, though, that was kind of intrigued by this game. I was intrigued. I was intrigued by it because I'm like, you know, it's something I've never seen before. Yeah. And it's definitely that. Then it's, you know, something I've never wanted to touch before. <laughs> um, so the more you learned about it, because I, I think that was true from a lot of people. Yeah. I think there was a lot of hype around this game, and then when the core, what you'd be doing... A lot of the game came out. I think that I, I think people that it's were split. hardcore Kojima fans said, I'm, I, like me, said, I'm in it, whatever. You could be uh, picking up dog poop in the backyard. Yeah. I'd still be playing it. But for you, you were like, I'm out. Yeah. And you were like, and maybe, yeah. I, um, yeah, when it was like, hey, this can be like an action game, it's going to be like a simulator game. And I just, I do logistics as a living. Like, if you guys don't know that, like, I, I work with trucks, <laughs> I make deliveries for a living. I don't want to do that. Definitely and yeah. not. Yeah. In my living. Yeah, I understand. I've been to work. I played Mass Effect Andromeda. I don't want to do it again. <laughs> um, so I just kind of avoided it. Sure. Uh, I appreciate the art of it. I think um, it looks great. Yeah. I, I think the concept's there. I think it's a little overhyped, but I mean, I'm opinionated and I'm allowed to have my opinions. I don't know. I think this is the most Kojima. 
has ever been let off the leash. To a point where it's like, with Metal Gear, okay, there's guns, there's stuff that like... This isn't him off the leash. Around. This is him putting two leashes on his own neck and <laughs> using his own hands to lead himself. Like, he is... This is ropes. Sticks he, and ropes. He is like so in his own element, so divorced from any concept yeah. of what you're supposed to do. Um, and, the, yeah, like, I have hit a point with this game. I think earlier in Metal Gear Solid games, I would try and tell you, dude, you really should play him. I think you'll like yeah. him. Get used to it. I know you don't like stealth. Yeah. I told you this a couple of weeks ago. I said, I'm actually not even going to try to convince anybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is not a game that you're going to convince yourself to like either. It's either you're drawn to it, and then if you're drawn to it, I'd say, yeah, you should check it out. If somebody needs convincing, I say, go play any other freaking yeah. thing in the world because yeah. I can't help you. Really, there will be stretches in this game where you just got to be down for the vibe that it is yeah. setting up and down for the grind that it really actually ends up being yeah. at points. And if you are down for that, you're going to have a once-in-a-lifetime experience. If you're not, don't even try. I got don't my even... experience through um, various different YouTube videos and watching like people play it for like five to now yes. here's my problem with that. I'm gonna that, that's a, quick. Yeah. I was seeing multiple videos. I even saw, and I love this guy, Dunkey's video mm -hmm. on it, along others. Now, here is my thought process on that. If the core thing is you're delivering packages. If you take if that's the skeleton in this game, that's everything scripted. The gameplay loop. Yes. You are taking packages from point A to point B. Everything surrounding that is why I love the game. Like, yeah. there's more. I, I do enjoy the package stuff. There's a degree of fun and things that can you can do in that. But the the stuff surrounding it and the story and the lore and the world is more to that. So I think as much as I love Donkey and whatever else, and I think those people are entertainers. I almost compare them to when people say like, I get my news from the Daily Show, yeah, or whatever. That to me is Donkey. Like there's a kernel Marvel. of truth in yeah. maybe their criticism, but they they Dunkey. go to like an elevated place. But where Donkey it's... is trying to entertain, and with all of the, I understood that with all of the videos, yeah. there's stuff to poke fun at Mass Effect that he's yep. done and whatever yeah. else. But it's like you didn't play. If you can still get enjoyment from Mass Effect Andromeda, but he is trying to find the nuggets that are funny. Yeah. And that's training. You're trying to find the nuggets that are trying to make a funny video. And you're right. In, in specific <laughs> example towards Donkey in his video, but there was other people I watched. Um, not, I watched it more for the gameplay, gameplay aspects because yeah. I knew that, one, I knew we were going to talk about it. So I didn't want to come in <laughs> completely like, oh, frick it, I didn't yeah. touch it. Um, two, I also understand why people were into this game. Yeah. Why were they why, so yeah, why are you enamored by package? everything that they do? And it, you're right. It was the world. It was the yeah. fact that every time you step out there, you really don't know where you're stepping to or what you're stepping into. Um, it's definitely just it's different every single time. <coughs> um, when Dunkey released his video, I watched it actually a couple days ago. It was really funny because I, I knew where he was coming from. And his Whenever he does a video, like he is, you're right, he's an entertainer. Yeah. If you put, like, a dunk view together, I feel like it's, a, like, a legitimate, like, hey, this is a review yeah. of this game. This is what I think. If it's not that, it's, uh, you know, here's everything that's wrong with this game. Yeah. It's kind of funny and lighthearted yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. Um, for that game, he definitely put it in a light where it's, like, this game's garbage. Like, if I watched, sure. if I never saw, if I never saw a gameplay of the game, but I just watched that, I would look at it and be like, that's a hot mess. Yeah. Who would want to play that game? Uh, but, but I haven't watched the video it's not a hot mess at all. Like yeah. it's the most, it's so one of the most technically. That's how they're editing the, yeah. yeah, and not just Donkey. Like all these people with any game, it doesn't matter if it's oh, God I, of War yeah, or whatever. They're trying to find weird glitches in it or funny looking things. And believe me, there is some funny. And some of the stuff in the video is like him trying to get up on a bike on a it's oh, like, yeah, like, yeah. Like, But it's that cut to just down to that. And I think if you get. If that's solely what you're going on, yeah, you're gonna like this game is gonna be like, are you just delivering packages? But if you go into it, and again, if you're not into it, totally get this. Kojima as a creator is my favorite, like, of all time. One of my favorite of yeah, all time. Yeah, yeah. The way he just builds these worlds and these characters has influenced me in my own stuff, and even dweebs and stuff that we did. Like, there's little elements of Kojima in all that I do creatively. That this guy has created to me, even on his first trailers, like. What are these things walking around with invisible, yeah, thing like yeah. Uh, handprint things? What's Norman Re naked Norman Reedus with a baby? Like it it's is a so, curiosity. It, it is so out there. As you get in this game and they start to explain some of that stuff, and you see even more of it, it's like this to me is some of the most exciting sci-fi world stuff yeah. I've ever maybe seen ever. Oh yeah, it's so ever. like we, we were we were talking about it, and I feel like so many things you can trace back, right? Like. 
you watch Halo, but then if you've seen Aliens, you're like, oh, like, yeah, Halo yeah, is aliens, yeah. right? Yeah. Or like you see the head crabs in in uh, Half Life, and you're like, mm-hmm. oh, like those are the head crabs and aliens. Yeah. And then like, you know, things get traced back to Star Wars, right? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, like these ships, are, that's very Star Wars, mm-hmm. right? Death Stranding looks like an alien made some science yeah. fiction set in America. Like, I honestly, the architecture, yeah. like the way like the the bridges, the way stations are, the way the technology looks. The babies and the canisters, <laughs> yeah. the like? the BTs and like the hands and the whole concept of what he's doing with body and soul yeah. and death and rebirth and all this stuff. Um, it's like not like yeah. anything else. I mean, like and I'm sure he has influences, but uh, everybody's and, got influences. As far, as far as like stuff that I can pinpoint, I can't. Like he has creatively mixed these things together yeah. where it's like. It feels otherworldly. But here's the it thing. Feels it, out there. It feels like, otherworldly. And, like, you look at America in this game, yeah. and it looks nothing... It, it Like, it does and it doesn't. It looks like uh, like an alien planet. Like Yeah, at times it almost is a different planet. Grew on I mean, top stuff, yeah. of... But then you'll, like, enter a mountainous region, and then you'll look at your map, and you're like, yeah, like, I'm in the west. Like, I am yeah. out, like, in Colorado kind of area yeah. or whatever. So it's this awesome mix of, like, this feels familiar-like, but it feels totally foreign. But here's the thing. The sci-fi is done so well. They yeah. pace out the the information. It's it's really interesting how the world's coming together. You're getting it from emails. You're getting it from cutscenes. You're getting it from dialogue. You're getting it from codex. You're get. Yeah. I think more than any other Kojima game, he's really got a good te- feel on how to disperse information. Mm-hmm. And there'll be something I read in like a in like a article where I'm like, oh, like that seems really important. I feel like if I hadn't read this, I'd be missing out. But then, yeah. like, an hour later, Dead Man will bring it up in a more condensed yeah. form, the thing that I read. And it's like, oh, like, you could just ignore the articles. You'll get less lore, but you'll probably get to follow along. Or you can dive deep and read all that stuff, and it's really great. So, But, but all that being said, like, the lore is cool. The science fiction, if the characters don't work, and if the emotional beats don't work, the story won't work. Mm-hmm. And this also has all of that. Like yeah. every chapter focuses in on a character that Sam, the main character, is going to be around in some capacity, and it's done a great job with like introducing a character, introducing these quirks about them, or something yeah. that's wrong with them physically or emotionally or spiritually. And then you are doing these packages and you're doing these weird things, and Sam's learning something about the world, but then you're also learning about these other people and. I'm impressed with that. I mean, I have wondered because I loved the Metal Gear games, but Metal Gear Solid 4, I felt like, had some weak... It was unbalanced, I felt like. I felt like all the Solid Snake being an old man stuff worked. I felt like all the other stuff was collapsing on its own weight. And then Peace Walker is like a comic book, and then Metal Gear Solid 5, it starts really strong and drives off a cliff Mm story-wise. And there's no emotional resonance in the way they close out anything with the characters themselves. For me as a player, there were some nice beats, but for the... So I've been sitting here wondering... I'm on Chapter 7, Clifford. So I just did a weird sequence thing, and now I'm back in like what I would consider to be the normal gameplay loop, um, and I'm going to deliver some things. But that being said, like it's been since maybe Metal Gear Solid 3 where I felt like Kojima had a story that was like thematically awesome, character-wise awesome, action, world, everything was clicking on all cylinders. That's like... 15 years ago, 14 years ago. Yeah. He's made good things since, but like I was starting to wonder like do, do I overhype? Do I just like his style? Mm-hmm. Do I just like his creativity or do I actually like the characters that he makes? Cuz we haven't seen new characters from him yeah. in a long freaking time where he's not referencing other things. Yeah. He's not, you know, oh this is uh, it's, Revolver it's Ocelot Gear, yeah. in the 70s yeah. or you know what I mean like it's this is Metal Gear. it's always been Metal Gear with him and that's cool but like I was starting to wonder like can he still totally just create new people and dude he has like emotion uh, he's got great, great. I think he's at his best right now. This is the yeah. best he's ever been in terms of introducing a world, introducing characters. Yeah. It's cinematic, but it's also so something you could only do in a video game. So yeah, well, but yeah. So I'm on chapter seven. Um, there is, you know, a character that gets 
kind of sprinkled in that you're like seeing through like a foggy window type deal, you know, figuratively and literally in a way. Yeah. But like, I'm starting to get a feel for who that person is and how that person connects to what all is going on in the world. Um, and so now that I'm, I already kind of had a feeling based on things I saw in trailers where it looked like there were things happening at different periods of time. And now I'm getting a feel for like, oh, like I am affirmed that that is something that's kind of going on. But this is a game about like, like the spirit and the body and all the things that do and don't happen to you when you die and it's fascinating it's really it's got a little bit of lost i feel like it has a little bit of evangelion yeah. has a little bit of um alien to it a little bit of yeah. weird psycho you know like creatures there's a little bit of lovecraftian influence um in terms of you know just like just like the monsters and stuff yeah. so Go ahead, though. You were going to say something. I, I feel like I want to talk more after you've beaten it. Oh, stuff. yeah, there's, yeah. There's certain things I'll keep. We'll dive deeper. Whatever. But, uh, no, I, I beat the game, and I loved it. I think that um, for what I'm into, like this kind of crazy world, like throw me into stuff I don't know. So I went totally blind to this. I did see some of the trailer stuff. It was interesting when certain stuff comes, like, is this? Okay. That was one of the things for the trailer. Yeah. But it, a, a, a lot, I did not see. A lot... There was a ton. Oh, yeah. I never saw five. I felt like, frick, I've seen every I checked I out when the like launch trailer released. I yeah. watched a little bit of it, but I was like, I'm going to play this game. Really but there's tons of stuff that's not stuff from the trailers. There's a lot of cutscenes ha we haven't seen. So mm -hmm. that was that was exciting coming off from Metal Gear Solid 5 as we felt like lack of it at times at that. No, I love it. Uh, uh, talking about like the core loop, the package stuff. You could really generalize it and say this is a walking simulator. It is. But if you watch someone play it and you actually get it in your hands, it's like, oh, the environment is the enemy. Yeah. Hills and little rocks are the enemy when you have 16 packages on your back and you're trying to balance this and trying to figure it out. And it's like, oh, that's the game. Like, mm -hmm. that's actually, it almost turns into a driving game. I was going to say that. It's like, almost like a driving balance, game. At, time, at times, if you, it's so heavy on you, it'll say, like, um, hold the right trigger to balance so right. Because you see him like and falling. If you, if you turn too quick or if you're going down too sharp of an incline of a hill or whatever, like mm -hmm. usually something that you would like, any hill that in a video game you would just go down fine. This yep. like, you got to start you'll thinking about it. You'll start the, picking up momentum. The control yeah. starts shaking and you have to like start thinking like, oh, I need to go down this way and drive this way and whatever. But. And, and, it, and it's so, I was showing um, my sister's boyfriend, we were hanging out and I was showing it to him because he likes hiking and he's been getting more into video games the past yeah. couple, like this past year. And he was just so taken aback. He was like, this looks incredible. And I was like, yeah, I was like, so like hiking, I was like, so look, this is the path that I plotted on my map. Like I've got this stuff. These things I'm carrying are just for me. These other things I need to get to this other place. Mm -hmm. And I showed him, I was like, see, there's some rain over here. So I don't want to go there. And so like, I'm going to go here. And then there's some rocks. It looks like I can cross this river. And like, I got to get down here so I can use my ladder or yeah, my rope. Think, yeah. But then like, I don't have my rope to get up the next thing. So maybe let me, oh, okay. Here on the map, there's another person looks like they left a rope and I scanned and I could see okay and then I get there and it's like oh like what I thought was rocks is actually a waterfall yeah. let me try and cross I can't get across so I go back I'm scanning the water oh okay there's a bridge somebody built a bridge so I go over cross the bridge and it's just like you're solving the environment yeah the environment it's, is the puzzle. it's like a puzzle kind of like a driving your body you know logistics it it's not mundane someone said oh it's just a bunch of fetch quests no a fetch quest is like when you grab something in the witcher and you run by holding forward across town and deliver it to the person by pressing x like yeah. this is like that's that's like saying you warmed up a pizza so you're an italian chef i don't know like it's not the same thing at all like you this is like making from scratch yeah. you know what i mean this is like learning how to actually cook yeah. not cooking some hamburger helper yeah. so yeah you're walking around delivering yeah. packages mm -hmm. but like you're really thinking and engaged it's also kind of like breath of the wild yeah. exploration on extreme mode yeah you know when like oh i gotta watch the salmon bar this if you have a bunch of packages and you're trying to go into the river and just walk across and it gets too deep and you didn't scan yep. Because you can scan to see yep. how deep the water is. And this happened to both of us, I think. The water can just sweep you away. If you stand and you'll lose all your packages, and it just turns into a cuss fest. Like, yeah. It just with me That's happened to me like, a couple times. I literally was walking down a mountain. First of all, I turn a corner. 
normally in a game, if I turn a corner, I see like a really steep slope, I think, oh, if I die, like I'll have yeah. to quick save or I'll have to quick load if it's this like Skyrim. Or it's like, ah, uh, I can just run down this. If you turn the corner sometimes and you're like, oh, and like your character <laughs> starts going like this and you like almost you like, yeah, I clinch. I'm like, oh, please don't fall. Yeah. And then, okay, but the other day I did and like a boom, boom. And I had stuff start falling down <laughs> this mountain. And then th- the reason I was on this mountain is there was a group of BTs down below and I was avoiding them, yeah. but the stuff I needed fell right down in the middle of all of them. And I was like, oh my God. So now it's a stealth game. And I got to stealth down there and grab stuff. Yeah. And and there, I don't want to really, if you ever do play it, there are like enemies that are people and they've got their own kind of lore and backstory of yeah. why they're doing what they're doing. But like, it's gotten to points where like, they've got guns. I'm yeah. not shooting them necessarily, yeah. or I am, or I use tools, but like, and I'm like, I had a mission where I was like, you gotta get in the middle of this camp and go get this camera. And I was like sneaking around. I was like, this is like Metal Gear, yeah. you know? It, you don't have all the same options you did in Metal Gear Solid Five, but the core is still kind of yeah. there. So it's got some glimpses of that to it. So uh, yeah, we'll talk more next week, or next, yeah. next week. No. Next time. Next time it'll be all spoilers. Yeah. It'll be all open spoilers. Well, yeah, cool. Well, I mean, I, I <laughs> maybe just, not all open spoilers. I just have one. I mean, I, I think I'm not going to play the game. Um, I've just made that decision. The only hot take I have is I do think um, I define this more as art. Um, if anything, more or less, I think. Kojima, I do think it goes into. So that's what I was going to elaborate on. The core le- uh, loop of delivering packages, fighting the environment. I love. There's parts of this game where I just said it's delivering packages the skeleton of it the core of it it's delivering packages like yeah. there's times when it got action, it got, but frust- it, I, it got frustrating and I don't think you're in certain parts where I got to and there's parts even in chapter 3 you've been into where I was just like I feel like I'm going to point A and point B. The point chapter a point I B. just finished was the most I ever felt that way where you're in the mountains and basically story stops thing that's important to how you <laughs> yeah. work is off the table. Thanks you balls, don't have yeah. it. And it's basically, hey, do four basically what I would call side quests in a row. Yeah. And that's Maybe what that's, it, that's what, what you're talking that's about. That's when it goes But here's what I'll say. I did two of them and I was like, this sucks. But then I realized I was like, well the game is really trying to shove a couple of these new tools down my throat. Mm. Maybe I should actually look into them. Yeah. And one of them was the zip line. Okay. And I if you did you use yes. that at all? Yeah. I actually was like, you know what? I keep walking by these things. I tried to get in one one time and it wasn't yeah. connected. And I was like, I don't know. Good. I was like, I don't know how to connect it, but I was like, was like, look, I'm on these mountains. They're telling me to do four or five of these things in a row. Like, I should just try. And you know what? I did one little zip line that was already made and I was like, this is amazing. And I literally, instead of doing those four or five missions and banging my head against the wall for three hours, I just made zip line points and connected them. And I basically walked the course of the mountains once. And then I just grabbed those orders and, went, zzz, zzz, yeah. zzz, and got it done like immediately. Yeah. So there are tools there to help yeah. bridge that gap, I feel yeah. like. But it is delivering I, packages. Yeah, I ran into stuff where. So what on more on what you're saying to I kinda, the point I, where I was in shock when I actually entered the first time that I would say you're in a more traditional action yeah. setting. Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't even know what to do. Like yeah. I was so like, used to the other. yeah, I was like gun shy, and I was like, how do how do I even do this? Like but back it, on the delivering stuff. So there are times where I'm just like, yep, I'm delivering stuff, and and I'll be honest too. We talked about this too. I didn't do any of the side things they want you to do there's there's problems where we, we've talked about where metal gear solid 5 you're getting you're sending out troops you're sending out your soldiers and stuff and you're leveling up stuff and there's mm-hmm. an incentive to do that there's yeah. not much incentive to this aside from uh kind of uh aesthetics yeah to get what you're getting and i'm not leveling up my stuff that's just happening as i'm progressing yeah the story. And it's like it loses some of that to but there's stuff in this game where it's like yeah it is very artsy and Definitely towards the end, and some of the stuff they're doing in the story throughout, that I was just like, yeah, this is kind of an art house game in some yeah. ways. There is this core loop that I really love, but you, 
you have to be tracking with this other stuff to get the full enjoyment of the game. Yeah. Like this this world and everything else. But we'll yeah, talk more on that other stuff. Yeah. I, I have a more to, to, to go on that point here. Yeah. Saying, but I have more of like a formulated opinion um, that I want to continue to solidify over time. Uh, the last thing I want to do is to sit here and say something about something I don't really know enough about. Well, no, I think all of your what you're saying is totally fair, though. Yeah, yeah. And, but that's I'm just saying from where you're coming from. Yeah, I can see I, that. I, 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 on the outside looking, I think Kojima he he creates art through video games, and he's done a great job in that sense. Um, I have a very like hard time grasping this, and I, I don't want to open the can of worms, but I'm, I'm going to do it anyways. I I, I am very peeved that this game is considered. Um, by multiple people, like game of the year status in terms of like they want to throw it out there, and they're like mm. they are throwing this game like it's the greatest thing that's came out since sliced bread. Um, I don't think it's ran that course yet. I don't think it's like I don't think it's there. Uh, but uh, again, that's why I said I don't want to start this. <laughs> Here's I, what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. Um. Every year, something wins Game of the Year that you either like or you don't like. God of War was consensus Game of the Year. I thought it was pretty good. Like, Mm -hmm. I honestly was like, Game of the Year is a Spider-Man, is a God of War. And I was like, I don't really care. Like, they were both good. Like, neither one of them got me super excited. I'm, you know what I mean? So. So to me, like the, what makes this game, at least for me, and I'm not saying it's my There's game of the year. I'm not talk done. About, and I really want to jump in. Sorry. Yeah, I'll finish this that thought game in a second. Has they called it a new genre? Like, yeah, it, it's they it keeps calling it a strand game, and I was like, is this really Kojima? Once you play it, yeah, and that was another part. I'm saying it's delivering package. This is another thing that's puffing that up. There's even yeah. more layers to it. You start to see, because you're talking about the ropes and stuff. You've already said that ladders, people can leave ladders, people can leave ropes. You can also build stuff, so people can build those little zip lines. They can build different Mm -hmm. things. They can build roads. They can build different, like, you're helping people to the point where it clicked for me. And I was like, this game is special. I never felt this in a game. Kojima's on a different level. Like, here's the rest of the playing field. Here's Kojima. Yeah. So that's where I think. Check yourself a little bit. I know you said I'm going to peep. I am peep. I'm pissed off. Mm-hmm. It's, Jacob, it, it, I'm just saying there's different, like, when there's things that click in this game, you go, oh, God, I see what he's doing. Yeah. This guy's on a different level in the gaming industry. He's trying to push the medium forward. Like, we, he, the game is about trying to reconnect America, and I'm, like, clicking like on people's stuff because they really freaking helped me out when I was mm-hmm. losing packages and frustrated. They helped yeah. me out and they didn't even know me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we're reconnecting. You're getting, you're getting help with by people you don't know, and you're helping other people. Yeah. And it to me, what like makes a good like, oh, game shit. a good game is not great cutscenes. It's yeah. not, oh, I love Star Wars. Not to rag on Star Wars. I bought Star Wars. But, oh, I love these this world, and this is fun. Or, oh, I love Dark Souls. It's when the theme connects completely to the actual act of playing the game. One of the reasons why, as much as I like The Last of Us or Uncharted... Those games don't do a lot for me at that like upper echelon sure. level yeah. because at the end of the day, it's just a third person yeah. shooter and then it's some really popcorn. great story. They do not like mechanically connect the mechanics. I will say Last of Us did a little bit with like you shifted characters you yeah. play, but even then, talking about Uncharted specifically, yeah, yeah, it's a lot of popcorn. I, I would it's, say it's more about Uncharted than I would Last of Us, but like this game is the game by far this year that the most, as far as anything I have seen, completely just meshes that act of playing it and the things you're doing with what it is trying to teach you or get you to emotionally think about. I would say it's an extremely polarizing game. It's a polarizing game. (laughs) It's a polarizing game. But to me, like, to me, game of the year doesn't have to be the, like, the game that is the, that the most people like. Mm-hmm. To me, it's like, what defined this year? What did people talk about? What will we look back in 10 years and say, holy crap, that game was crazy or it was good? Or, and so some years it's something like Overwatch. And it's like, yeah, like there had never been a game yeah, that was like literally. 2016, I, I yeah. get that. So to me, like, that's why I think it's just a strong contender. But that's where I. Like, and again, this is why I said, I don't think it's been ran, ran through the ring enough yet. What what does a game have to do to win game of the year in your mind? Just because I don't I know what ran through the ring. So if means. you're sitting here saying like, this game is the game that's going to help define this year, I think it came out far too late for it to help define 2019. Like, I think like, it's one of those games where it's like, man, you know what? If this came out back in February and then like next year we started to see games that were kind of like 
following the path, like setting. Well, like... Uh, I mean, you, you're not going to see anything come out six months from now that no, is you're, you're influenced right. necessarily. No, and that's what I'm saying. But it's something that helps define that year. Yeah. So when I think of like you're saying recency bias, yes. Like I'm not saying like I'm not going to say like Death Stranding is not the end of the year. I don't. I'm not saying like sure. You're like, I, are we going to be talking about it in a year? We're saying we will, but you're like, will we? Will we? I like, will be. I mean, to me, I don't get this feeling often. I got it with the mechanics of Metal Gear Solid Five. I got it with Breath of the Wild. I have a strong feeling. Just what I play to this game is going to stick with me. And that's why I tend to sit here and say like, I'm going to hold my peace until I feel like I have a, a better. More formulated. I think you should. Opinion. I think you should play it, even if it's just a rental. We'll see what happens. Just, uh, just. Uh, I think that you can watch videos. I don't think it's going to be your favorite kind of game. Mm -hmm. I do think it's good that you played Metal Gear Solid Five and you started liking yeah. that. That might bode well for this. I'm not. I don't think that you'll love this, but I think just to understand, I've seen. I, I'm not saying you're saying this, but I have seen some narrative out there of like, Kojima makes movies. People just put up with his gameplay or whatever just to get his movie clips. Mm. No, like the game, yeah. like the mechanics and the feel, and it, yeah. it, I mean, it's f excellent. Yeah. And like I spend more time in the menus, like sorting out how I want to do this, how yeah. do I want to organize things. God, I'm thinking it like logistics. <laughs> but I'm thinking tactically, I'm running around the world. Like the vast majority of the game is spent running around the world yeah. and just having fun and figuring out what, how you want to beat things. So I just, that's one misnomer that I, I've seen people say, like, maybe it should win movie of the year, but it shouldn't be the game of the year. Yeah. I'm like, you didn't play it. Yeah, no, like... I yeah. think there's something about playing whatever, but... More talk, uh, about, uh, more talk about that later. Let me... I'm going to lightning round through what I played. Okay. Devil May Cry 3, I beat it. I'm going to give you all the Devil May Cry up to what I'm playing now. Devil May Cry 1, skip it. <laughs> it was cool, it came out PS2, whatever. It wasn't bad, it just wasn't... It came out when I launched. Devil May Cry 2, never happened. Don't even think about it. Don't ever play it. <laughs> Don't even think about playing it. It's not good. That's not it's very bad. That's not a great start for a series. It's very bad. Devil May Cry three, freaking rad. They found their footing. Funny, off the wall goofiness that made its way into Bayonetta. The Bayonetta could series. Could you just jump in with three? Yes, I think you could. And know nothing. Uh, Watch the cutscenes. There is like baby things. That, uh, I, I was in four, going ah, cool that they did that or whatever. Oh, okay, but. You really could find a like uh, a catch up video on YouTube and just watch over one and two. You really yep. could. Devil May Cry Three is rad. It's funny. It's off the walls bonkers. It's like people shooting rockets. I'll give you this at the very beginning. Someone shoots a rocket. He jumps on the rocket and rides it around for a little <laughs> bit and stuff. And they're fighting demons and stuff. So funny. So good. Devil May Cry Four. This came out in '08, and when it came out, I had heard mixed stuff on it. I didn't know if people liked it, and I was just like, oh man. But I want to try it out for I want to go through the whole series because 5 looks awesome. Mm -hmm. 4 is great. 4 is funny, just like the other ones. Like, it's it's got the, the crazy character. They introduce a new character. It's almost Raiden. Oh, in wow. In Metal 2, you play as a different character for the most of it. Oh, wow. And uh, then you can play as the other, as Dante or whatever. They talk about it in the, when you start the game. But um, very freaking fun. I love the new character. I love the mechanics. Tell me Cry 4 is great. Second half is a lot of backtracking. Even with the backtracking that kind of sucks, it, it's still fun. So that is a good game to me. But didn't they do, correct me if I'm wrong, a game called like DMC? That's yes. Like, and I don't know if I'm going to play that one, but I do want to check it out at some point. It's I heard kind of it was divisive. Hot, it's, very divisive. it's very divisive. It's very I've divisive. Seen. Some okay. people actually like it. Some people absolutely hate that game. It kind of reimagines the first one. Or, okay. I was, or just cu I was curious whether or not that was the so next is DMC. Sure, tell me I should play DMC, Devil May Cry 2, and then... Yes, that's exactly that's it. what I'm saying. Yep. Uh, but yeah, did that, and then Shinmu 3. So I played Shinmu 1 and 2 um, right around the time Shinmu 3 was announced. I backed it. I kick-started it. Was it worth it? I can only compare this to another Kickstarter game. And let me finish. Ukulele. Oh, I, kick, I kickstarted ukulele. That's a uh, ringing endorsement. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> ukulele, I didn't, like, get mad over that game. You got outside, mad over the outside, of, outside of the package issue. 
Aster. <laughs> the game itself, I, I knew what I signed up for. It's another N64 game. It yeah. felt like an N64 game that someone found and made up. HD. Yeah. And, and that's what you get to play. I, and I was satisfied. Shinmu 3 is that to an extreme degree. Someone found Shinmu 3 in the bottom of, <laughs> of, uh, of a basket. Dreamcast. That was, it feels like a Dreamcast game for better and for worse. For both, like... It feels like it to an extreme. You're playing Shenmue Three Remastered. <laughs> I'm playing Shenmue Three Remastered that someone found on this game, but it is also the room of video games. It is if you've ever seen the movie The Room, Tommy will so check it out. Uh, whatever. Most people know what that is. Shenmue Three specifically, or all the Shenmues? All the Shenmues, but in 20 freaking 19, playing this game, yeah. it is unreal. <laughs> Some of the stuff. I will give you a comparison of what this game is. In other games, hey, uh, can you go talk to Charles? He has the item you need. You go to Charles, and the action starts picking up. You start fighting enemies, and stuff starts going. This game is go talk to Char. Ah, go talk to Charlie. He might know. Yes, Charlie. Do you know a kung fu master, a martial arts master? Ah, get away! Hmm. Excuse me. What's going on? <laughs> it is like. What is going on in this world? Jeez. It seems yeah. like everybody is not in the That's right That's kind mind. of my memory like... of Shenmue 2. Like, I played Shenmue 2 because I, I wanted Grand Theft Auto <laughs> on Xbox, but the game crazy I went to didn't have it. Yeah, well, they really so told you. the guy told me to get Shenmue, and he said it's kind of like GTA in Japan. <laughs> So I That's got it, and it was comparison. like thirty-seven dollars used. Yeah. It was so expensive. This was like two thousand five. Yeah. So I buy Shenmue two, and I take it home, and I'm in like sixth grade or whatever, and <laughs> I put this stupid game in, and I run around the opening area for what feels like two hours. Yeah. I find a little mach- like a little game where like a pegboard and like a, the <laughs> thing goes down, and yeah. I kind of played with that for a while, and I was trying to figure out like they said go to see this person. I never found them, and I probably played it for like five hours and just never. The game has it. the same type of charm that the room does. Some people can watch the room and go, "This pisses me off. Why am I watching this?" Shinmu, yeah. I think, has that same type of like appearance. Like you can just be rejecting it, or you can just be laughing. I w- within two minutes of Shinmu one, two, and three has kept the co- has kept this trend up. In all those games, within minutes, I'm laughing because it is it's yeah. crazy. Some of the dialogue. Can you help me in Shinmu one or two? Going up to these like schoolgirls. Oh, I, I need to find um, the corner store, the um, the, the deli. Get away from me, you creep! Like just stuff like that. That is so random. It's yeah. so like the room, just bad voice acting. Love it. This game though pushes the limits of what <laughs> I can deal with. It's literally go talk to Charlie. I don't know where they're at. It, but if you can catch chickens for me, you gotta check catch ten chickens. And I was literally going f this, f this, f, like playing this, going f off. Like I was saying that so many times, like f Jeez. off like, the whole time. So if you are a Shinmu fan, you will freaking love this game. It is what I wanted as a Shinmu fan. Yeah, they really did not be influ- They're not influenced by anything else. They didn't try to like be this or be Breath of the Wild. Yeah, they're Shinmu. They are Shinmu. That's it. If you did not like Shinmu 1 and 2, run away. <laughs> and if you've never played any of the Shinmus, but you like the room, maybe check it out. Yeah. Everybody else, you're going to hate it. Uh, I, I have those on Game Pass, and I also have the Yakuza games on Game Pass. Yeah. So I'm like trying to decide, like, my plan, I'm trying to play like good modern ish games. I played Shinmu uh, 1 and 2 before Yakuza, and I'm glad I did because we played Yakuza and tried to go yeah. back and try to compare those games. God, you're going to have a. Yeah. Freaking bad time. Because I know they're different, but they feel like they might scratch similar itches, you yeah. know? I don't know. But that's interesting. That's really interesting. So that's what I've been playing. Jacob, you've been playing Dead by Daylight? Oh, how'd you know? Um, it's in the script. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I haven't. Uh, that hasn't changed. I'm actually excited because uh, the game itself has continued to continue to grow and continue to change. They're releasing a new chapter. Um, with a new killer that's my god might break the game. As someone that's Who's played Dead by Daylight, what does it mean that there's a new chapter? There's no story. So there is no st- there. There's no story, but there's lore. And behind each killer and each um, survivor, okay. there's a reason why they're trapped within the entity's realm. Um, they get invited, pulled in. The entity summons them to continue to sacrifice for it, or the survivor is pulled off out of the world 
and stuck in this endless game that is serving me. So when I get my little guy out, he's he goes right back in. Yep. Now, who's the new killer? Uh, the new killer is called the Oni. Um, the Oni is related to the spirit. Do you know the spirit? Mm, well, the, no. The, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah it's in a, the game. The Japanese warlord. Yeah. Um, and he's so broken because what he can do is... Um, I feel like any new character in any new game is immediately broken. Yeah, Most well, Smash Brothers games, they have to patch and tweak yeah. little, yeah. little things. Well, that's why I'm glad that Dead by Daylight, before they release a killer, they introduced the PTV. Balancing like, a live game is a nightmare. Yeah. Well, yeah, the PTV... Nightmare. I will even give Dead by Daylight a pass. It's a, It'd be um, like if you were like trying to make the color balance in an image, and then every time you got it perfect... They slid like yeah. a new thing in there, and yeah. it was just like, "Well, I got to restart now." Um, the public test build is a beta for every new content they're about to release. Yeah, and it hits the beta, so everyone gets to play it. They get feedback and they balance it. Cool. They get feedback as in how many times the killer win versus the survivors, how many survivors make it out. You know, those kind of balancing. How does the perks get used? Yeah, that way they can look at the statistics and say, "Wow, the killer won." 70% of the matches, that's not really fairly balanced. Let's try to work on some of the mechanics. Yeah. Um, the Oni has the ability to hit a survivor with his regular attack, which is a sword, and the survivor starts bleeding profusely. These things hold, like, blood spirits. And you can the killer can track them and absorb them. Of course. And, but, listen, when he absorbs them, he gains his power. So he wants to absorb them, not track them. When he gets his power, he gets out a giant club that allows him to run around the whole map and one-shot people. So Alex is back, I heard, into this. Alex, Alex reached red ranks. He's What's a top that? five rank uh, survivor. He's sweaty. He's yeah. really good at the game. He's gotten extremely good. I I just wish there was more mechanical variety Dude, for you how get, you run away oh, and when how you... get you... to the new... Ra- so this is where I'm starting... When we first started playing the game, what was the objective? As the survivor? Yes. Uh, I mean, the objective is to activate generators and mm-hmm. escape. Yeah, that's not the objective. The objective is you want to pip. I don't know what that means. What's pip? Is you want to level up your ranking by doing generators, healing people, pulling people off hooks, and escaping. So if you pip... You just described all the things that we tried to accomplish. But I can pip by not surviving. So you don't care about surviving? Nah. I just want to pip. Well, that, that means you're not trying to win. That just means you're trying to level up. No, I win because I pip. Oh, the pip! You can win a different you, way. Do you escape? No, <laughs> but I pipped. Jacob, you guys are playing you your own game. Basically, decided. You asked me what the objective. My I, objective I was opinion. to win. Yes. Your I'm, objective is to level I'm up. I'm zero for a thousand in Call of Duty, but my rank because I just kept getting perks and so, so much, that's where it's like this just, game. I win. This game. Have kinda, fun, guys. <laughs> I fall in love with this game because like you're right. You want to survive, but for me, like if one person gets out. But everyone pips, uh, that's a win to me. Because you want to know why I help that person get out because I pull people off hooks. You would like that I, Well, that was also how I played, which was my idea was, I'm probably not getting out. <laughs> but if somebody gets out, you that would means like that. You like that because you like helping others and, no, and forming probably. bonds. Um, probably not. <laughs> So um, all you do in Death Stranding is run around and activate generators. Death Stranding, <laughs> all you do is run around and deliver packages. It's the same Dead thing. Dead by Daylight. You said Death Stranding. Oh, whatever. I hear you saying. Same um, thing. It's it's just good. I've I've learned like, man, if I can waste the killer's time for one minute and let people do two gins, delivering I, killers, I did a great delivering job. bodies to hooks is all. You're yeah, doing. you know, totally. The only thing I'm kind of upset about, um, which it is what it is, that it's part of the balancing act. There's a perk in the survivors. It used to be decisive strike was like the god perk. All it was where if you if you got hit, um, if you picked him up, if you hit a little skill check, you stab the skill the killer and you get off the mm-hmm. killer's back. Um, they changed it. It's now like a tunneling perk, which tunneling is where like if you get pulled off the hook and the killer goes directly after you every single time, just make sure he kills you. Your decisive strike activates and you get to stab him and get away. You cannot use the size of strike unless it's one of those situations. That sucks. Um, which, it does suck, but it's also good because it kind of helps the people who get tunneled. Um, which goes back to, there's another perk called Balanced Landing. Uh, balanced Landing is a perk where in the game, you don't you can run, but you don't get sprint boosts. Like, there's no sprint boosting. The only way is you want to keep the, you and the killer separated as far as possible. In this game, if you hit, jump off at the high height, you get a staggered effect. Where, like, you don't run immediately. So it's really bad if you're running away from a killer to take up a height and fall down because yeah. the killer just hits you. 
Um, Balance Lightning gives you the ability where if you actually take heights and jump off of them, you run away faster. Like you get a sprint boost, and um, yeah, it's like that's amazing. Yeah. So it gives you more looping opportunities. Uh, in this sense, uh, they're changing that. It's no longer the fact of um, you still get the sprint boost, but now you no longer get the, the benefits of the staggered effect. Where like, gotcha. If I jump off a if I jump off a cliff, I slow down now. If I don't have like exhaustion. Gotcha. So it sucks because in this game, I always feel like it's always killer friendly. Anyways, um, and it's always uh, it sucks to be the survivor, and you always have to grind when you're a survivor, so it makes it a little bit harder. Yeah. But it is what it is. So that 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 whole balance landing nerf is coming out in a week. Yeah. And I just. You know, spend 160 hours to get that perk. Get the pips up. I just got the perk, and so now I'm not going to be able to benefit off of it. Yikes, man. So, it's okay. But, you know, I am I love it. Alex, again, is in red ranks. I'm in green ranks. Um, What's the highest rank? Red. 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 Wow. Alex finally got up there. Um, ooh, rank reset. You no longer go back all the way to the beginning anymore. They changed really? that, too. You go back to the last color you were in. Oh, okay. Which is really nice, because I, I hated going back to gray. Every yeah. single time, and then playing with a bunch of crap potatoes. Yeah. Um, so it's no longer the case. So yeah, I'm Dead by Daylight, new chapter. I'm still playing it. Love it. I wish you guys would play with us, but you don't. But it's we okay. play a lot of death-involved games. Dead by Daylight. Death Stranding. Death Stranding. Shinmu. Pokemon. I have been playing Pokemon Shield, guys. Yeah. Um, I actually walked out, and I, I just yeah. beat it. I literally just beat it. Right oh, I, I was I, about I got, to ask in our I, group chat, did anyone beat this? I haven't heard any. I got in his car, and I was like... What are you playing? He's like, Pokemon. I was like, how is he? He's like, just beat it. Yeah. Like, really? Um, 24. How long did it take? 24 yeah. hours. 24 hours. Um, full day. Yeah, full day. Um, I pulled up. I was literally like on my Switch playing it, which has been... In the car. Oh, it's so awesome. I tell you what, man. You know how great it is to take a Pokemon game and like pull it out, play it, like laying on my couch and watching TV and then put it back in the thing and play it on my TV? Yeah, that, it's, that is pretty cool. Oh, it's so great. Um, it's a great game, man. It's it's honestly people poo pooed on it and yeah. What did you think about all the controversy stuff? I didn't see any of the controversy. What happened? There was uh, a boycott because this is the first one that came out and said that not all the Pokemon will be in there. And before you could always trade from past games and mm -hmm. get them all in there. Sure, but this and is the first game that they said we're not making the models for three. And the reason Pokemon people got so mad is like you're such a big company. You're telling me you cannot make all the models, but you're going to sit here and do everything else like in between. And for me, I say you know what? Yeah, if you're going to really nitpick at that, okay, boomer, don't don't buy the game. Like, yeah, whatever, frick you. It wasn't um, boomers. I just think like, dude. They're they're making new stuff. Like, why yeah. do appreciate the new stuff they're making? Yeah. You know, at, at the same time, like as, as much as I can see here say like in the day, oh, you know, I'm not gonna play Death Stranding because it's brand new and it's something different that I'm not gonna enjoy. No, I'm, it was definitely something I could see. It's come out that I guess some of these animations were reused from the Sun and Moon. Sun and Moon. So I do actually get that criticism, but what I don't get if it's this game or Pokemon Sword and Shield two or three or whatever's after this. At some point, if you keep adding hundreds of Pokemon, You're it's going to reach, reach maximum. Yeah. Like it does not. Which I, I fall back to. I think what's happened is they, they put the game out. They want people to play the actual game. They're not releasing the Pokemon Home app, which Pokemon Home allows you to transfer Pokemon from your 3DS yeah. games to the new game yeah. um, till February, because um, they want people to actually play this game and get used to it mm -hmm. and go through the mechanics. I think at, throughout this game's lifespan. They will make it to where more and more Pokemon will be available. Probably, um, they're going to have to do that. And if they don't, oh well, it's not it's not going to ruin my life. I, I don't need. Was there any criticism from all this? Because there was multiple things I saw people complaining about. Something that you were like, yeah, that. Honestly, the you only were just happy with it. the only thing I had an issue with. I don't like the Dynamaxing. Um, they had Mega Evolutions. Is that where, is that where stuff turns big? Yeah, okay. I'm not a huge fan of that. I do like the raid battles. Um, there's a thing called raiding where it's it's your four regular Pokemon gets one big giant Pokemon and you battle to catch oh. it and like most of the time it's like a super Pokemon That's like kind of yeah I That's like cool. that That's cool because it's online based and you get together with your friends and you go on raids um, That's cool I don't like doing that in the battle mechanic um, but mm -hmm. it's the same thing They took out Mega Evolution and we play Super Dynamax So who would you recommend this game to? Um, anyone Obviously your core kids I mean. Your your kids are gonna eat it up in the uh -huh. game, but anyone who likes still likes competitive Pokemon, 
because it's newer, it's it's cleaner, and they've really honed in on the whole like EV IV competitiveness of it. What did you think of the graphics? Because I that was another thing I heard people kind of crapping on. I thought it looked great. I'll tell great. you right now, I've only seen screenshots, and I was like, eh, this might look kind of rough. Then I was watching him play. I was like, this looks amazing. Yeah, it's it a Switch great. game. I mean, yeah. a lot of Switch games look weird in screenshots. That's what I heard people that got to see it on the screen, like holding on the Switch. It really looked, it really... Sh- well, you know inside. why? So here's where you run into your typical, like, underpowered Nintendo game versus under... No, great game versus underpowered uh, hardware. Mm-hmm. The game runs great, unless you're in the wild area. The wild area is where you catch all the Pokemon. Yeah. It's where you... It's a Deku Tree situation. The, yeah. <laughs> you take on the raid like the raid situations, all the raid Pokemon, you get the fight. It runs 15, 20 frames consistently. Oof. It's rough. Yeah. It looks great. What yeah. sets this game apart from uh, maybe like the last three, four, five generations? Something that you really liked. Something that I really like that sets it apart completely. I get to see the Pokemon in the grass before I battle them. We finally did it, guys. Um, that's well. You know, how cool. Like you, when you when you run through the grass back in the old Pokemon yeah, days, yeah, you yeah. randomly encounter them. Now it's like I'm walking through, and I'm like, oh, I don't need that Pokemon. I'm gonna kind of walk yeah. around it. But then you walk through, and you're like, oh, that's a Gardevoir. Yeah. Oh, All I've right. never I've never seen a Gardevoir in the wild before. So you run up and like I'm gonna battle yeah. it. You're trying yeah. to catch it. But cool. in the wild area, you're going against everyone else too. It's a, it's an online thing. Yeah. You see other trainers running oh. around catching Pokemon yeah. too. Um, yeah. So it's cool. It's exactly what you'd want it. Um, my future, my only future take for the Pokemon series is exactly what you said. When is a new enough's going to be enough? When are you going to finally give me where one big Pokemon game where I can start in Kanto, Johto, home? Well, that was what I was going to say last is, is this was something early, early, early on I was excited about. Not even engaged with it at all. Now, like, it's just not for me. It's for people like my younger brother who were appalled by my idea, but... I liked the first three generations. At that point, I'd had my fill. I played Leaf Green, had fun with that. Had my fill. um, Bought Pokemon Let's Go. It was charming. Played the first three, four gems. I pick it up every now and again in a blue moon. I'm ready for like the blow it all up. Give me Breath of the Wild. Give me Nino Cooney. I'm running around with these little creatures and I'm playing in it. That's what I'm ready for. When this was first hinted at and talked about, I thought that's what we might get. The first trailer kind of looked like it might be that way. But then as more things came out, I just checked out and said this one's not for me. So I appreciate some of the stuff they've done. They try to make it like you're seeing the Pokemon in the wild. It's more it's open world. That's cool. Like you're in this kind of bigger world. It just did. I looked at it and it just didn't appeal to me either. So I'm ready for like a Breath of the Wild type situation, like frick it all up and let's go nuts. I, and maybe they'll do that. And maybe I'll come back. But for now, I think I'm glad the only way for them, to, not the only way, but if they, I and I said this to you earlier, I was like, if they want to make money, why have they not made a game to where they put all the regions together and you get to choose what region you start in and then you choose which direction you want to go. Mm-hmm. Because in in the in the TV show, you have Ash who's going through Kanto, Johto, Hoenn. He's going through each region trying to become I, a Pokemon master. I got to tell you though, man, and I f- was on the receiving end of this of close friends and family <laughs> that are huge Pokemon fans. Very nice people. I have learned, and I'm assuming the Pokemon company is aware of this, Game Freak is aware of this, next to maybe only Star Wars, Pokemon fans are a cantankerous bunch when you start talking about changing things. People love The Last Jedi. They do not deal with change. Like I was like, I was Flash telling Jedi. my brother, I think I told this story on the podcast, I was telling my brother, I think they should do this and change up the game plan. He was like, wait, like then start there wouldn't fighting. be EVs and we couldn't do the leveling and the competitive yeah. scene would be all messed up and blah, blah, blah. And so you're saying, why don't they just do this? And why don't they just have all the regions? I'm with you. Yeah. It would be amazing. They would have to go back to square one with everything, and their fan base I, would lose their free... They were already mad when they couldn't have all 1,200 Pokemon yeah, in one game. If you started messing with stuff on that level, you would have to make cuts in other areas and Dude, restart certain things. I'm telling people you, would not be for people it. People would sit there and come back and say, you're telling me I can play all yeah. the Pokemon games in one game? I think it's a tragedy because I'm going to say something that might give me some hate. Who the F needs this game? You've got 
18 other versions <laughs> of this exact god that's, dang game where you do 8 or 10 gems and you yep. run around the yeah. world Catch and you a legendary. stop by a casino yeah. you hop on a cruise ship <laughs> you trade to get all the starters after yeah. a while, you get the legendary you go to the little island you try to decode the code, you look it up mm -hmm. online because you can't figure it mm -hmm. out and you throw the stupid great ball at the freaking bird and you catch yeah. it we have had this exact game yeah. 18 times. Just a different Pokemon. I understand it sells. It's a huge seller. I, I, I'm checked out. Pup, it is literally charge. the the furthest thing from Pup what I'm in interested charge. in. The, the opening cutscene opens up. It's freaking Pikachu, and he's blinking. And it zooms out, and you're in an open world. Yeah. It looks like freaking Skyrim. And the, it comes up. 2025, yep. the logo comes up, it's just called Pokemon. And, and this is a... And it's just called Pokemon. One of the reasons, the outside of even just how good it is, one of the reasons I love Breath of the Wild is, is I love Ocarina of Time. I might be not in the minor, majority, minority, whatever, mm -hmm. I don't care. I have felt like Ocarina of Time was so good that it made such a firm template that Nintendo refused to go yeah. outside of. Yeah. It was the same freaking yeah. thing. You would do a couple little starting little mini dungeons and then you do five to seven bigger dungeons with a boss and there was a puzzle yeah. mechanic and, and you got an item and yeah. you only use the item in that room. That's that right. was all set in a 3D space with Ocarina of Time. And what I love about Breath of the Wild is they said frick it to all of it. And the Zelda fan base, to their credit, I think some people didn't like it, and that's cool. You don't have to like everything. But people, for the most part, were like, cool. Yeah. You can't do that. For whatever reason, Pokemon, they're just not doing it. It's we're going to do it. We're taking Game Freak you by have, storm. Yeah, you have one. You have Game Freak. But I think it's what tonight. the series needs. You have Game Freak. Because it's which, such a good IP. You can do yes, so much yes. with we're this collecting animals game. We're signing a petition, and maybe we'll get the president involved. I don't know. I, I do think here's... Here's the one big big benefit you have. This game is on a home console, which is available to major updates oh. and major DLC. Releases. Well, I don't think it was on there. Did you see there was a petition to get Trump and to get to ban the sales of Pokemon in America? Yeah, see, that's where. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm signing that petition. I, I man, I'm I'm in between. I like the game. I like the competitiveness. The best part about it was the whole EV IV training was people. You know how people get? They want to grind. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Did you play Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon? No. Now his, when you guys say point. these I names, I, used to I feel like a, I feel like one of our wives when people are talking about Dragon Ball Z <laughs> and they're like, "What are you even saying?" <laughs> Ultra, Ultra Black, Mega I Moon. Skipped. Like I can't even hey, follow the I names. When I used to play, I would even when I enjoyed playing the Pokemon games, I skipped every other generation. You didn't play Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. You probably came to this like, oh yeah, it's time for a new Pokemon. Game. See, I that's how I used to yeah, feel. So yeah, the last one I played, I played X and Y, and I was like, oh, so this is even, awesome. You skipped um, uh, I Sun skipped and Black Moon. and White. I skipped actually. So here's the, here's the kick. I'm actually with you now. We're starting to track here. I played the crap out of Kanto. I played the crap out of Johto. Played the Hoenn game, and then I played Sinnoh. And when I played Diamond and Pearl, yeah. I was like. This is good. You're done. You're I done, think yeah. I'm done. I always joke that once they name one diamond and pearl, I'm out. Because that was when we were kids, we always joked like, that's going to be the next yeah. thing after Crystal and all these is yeah. diamond and pearl. And then they did it. So, but you know what happened? Black and white came out and I was like, ooh, I don't like this. Like, this looks weird. The Pokemon, I skipped it. Black and white two came out. Yeah, they didn't fix it. They just added on to it. Skipped it. Then they came out with um, X and Y. And they completely, they, they had the 3D models and the 3D world. And I was like, I'm in on this. Yeah, me, I, was, I felt the same. I, I was like, okay, something new. Yeah. It, it, even this one to a degree is that, but I yeah. just think I finally got sick of, I wanted an entirely new mm -hmm. crazy thing. But When they released X and Y, I played the crap out of it, and then Sun and Moon came out, and I was like, yeah, this is, this looks good. I'm not yeah, gonna play I, it. I totally checked out. So I didn't play that one. I have it. I actually own it, and I was going to play it because I was going to transfer all the Pokemon over to... Um, sort of chill. Can't do it. Can't do it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I like the game. This this is like if you just made kept making Dark Souls games for the next twenty years, like they and they got to Dark Souls eighteen, I'd be done. You know what I mean? Like I just speaking of uh, Dark Souls, I I got I got sold, man. I got screwed. <laughs> Um, so, I, so I got Star Wars Fallen Order. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. I, I kind of thought the game was going to be different. <laughs> what did you think it was? I, I thought it was a Jedi game where I got to beat people up and not have to play Dark Souls style <laughs> combat. Um, they had fricked that game, dude. I, it sucks. How much did you play it? Um, 
seven, eight hours in. I'm okay. actually I'm actually trying to play it because of Star Wars and I love Star Wars. How how what difficulty are you on? Paddle on. <laughs> um can we let's just wrap for a second. So I came Youngling. into the game and I thought I could play on Jedi Master. Um uh, like or Jedi Knight, like one yeah. of those like the the normal or hard difficulty. So I started on normal. And I couldn't get past, like, the opening scene against the, star- the Stormtroopers. I played... I've only played the opening of this game, and because I'm a Dark Souls player, I looked up online, and I was like, what should I play this on if I like Dark Souls? People said, Jedi Grandmaster, like, the highest one. And I was like, normally I never do that, but I'm pretty familiar with Souls games, yeah. so I picked that one. I got through the whole opening section, but I immediately realized, I was like, I will not enjoy this game yeah. if I do that. So I am going to, when I play it again, I'm going to drop it down. So I was at Jedi Master then. I, I went to that normal level. Yeah, I was at Jedi Grandmaster, yeah, which is the hard that. one. So um, when they started, like, introducing a bunch of Jedi shooting at you at the same time, you had to block all of them. And I'm like, my God, this is too much. Of, like, I can't, I can't do this. Yeah. So then I dropped it, I dropped it down to eat to easy. Yeah. Um, got through it. And then I got through a couple other things. And then I met my first uh, challenge. And I died. And died. And died. And died. And died. And then rolled off a cliff. And died again. And died. And then finally, I got yeah. to the point where I'm like, I got you down to half health. And then I started learning how to parry. And I'm like, oh, I'm getting good at this. And I beat it. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is what Dark That's Souls what is Dark, like. Yeah. He and, felt like Dark Souls. And then I got on a little farther and I faced my next boss and I kept dying and dying and dying. And then I put the controller down. And I was like, I'm going to come back to this. Yeah. And I came this back to it. This is how it gets you into Dark Souls. And then I played it, played it, played it, and I couldn't beat it. And I'm like, you know what? Frick it. Took the difficulty down to story mode. Oh, and yeah. And I, I wiped the floor with it. <laughs> so now I'm playing the game through story mode because I'm just like, I don't want to challenge. I want to enjoy the story. Um, it's, gameplay-wise, it's the most, from what I played, it's the most similar to Sekiro, which doesn't mean anything to you maybe yeah. necessarily. Sekiro's more action-y Dark so, Souls. It, it feels like action-y. Sekiro to play. I it really does. I think the first to me is um, you'll get there. And it's not really spoilers, but you saw in the beginning where you saw there's multiple enemies happening at the same time. Oh, like a mob. Yeah, yeah. So what sticks me off is they um they really turn the mob mentality on on you. And for me, I'm not good at these games. So like when I'm in the normal difficulty and I have six enemies around me and four are shooting at me and two are melee combating. Yeah, I'm like, how do you manage so, what to do? Classic Dark Souls scenario: two archers here, one archer here, three guys with swords down here. What you have at your disposal in this game that you don't have in other games is is you can deflect their blaster back at them. Yeah. So what I would do is hug one side or the other and just start by picking off the range guys because they'll just But see, here's my you. thing. I'm a Jedi. Why can't I go in there and just boom, boom, cut, 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 move on? Like, Well, I mean, this ain't... Uh, Order 66 yeah. happened and they think a Jedi gets shot one time and he dies. Well, well, this guy, I don't know that much about the story, but I had the feeling like he was a Jedi in training. He's oh, not he's literally. Yeah. Now, here's what I'll say. I'll kind of talk a little bit. You're seven, eight hours in. You're further than me. That opening like environment, and it's like Uncharted meets Sekiro is the best way I can really describe it. It's got like the kind of like, cutscenes and like the set pieces of like things falling and you're trying to grab onto things yeah. and you're climbing it's got that of Uncharted climbing with, mechanic yeah here. the climbing of Uncharted with the uh, yeah. with the stuff of Sek- with fighting of Sekiro but um, one of the things I liked was it's just been a while since we've seen prequel era stuff mm-hmm in the opening of this game, you're, like, on a junk world, and, like, there's, like, just giant, like, prequel era ships, like, that they're loading into a gigantic yep. thing. There's cool skyboxes, and it's, like, everything with the sequels and everything that EA's made has all been really focused on, like, like the original trilogy, yeah. you know? So this is just cool. It's, like, it's kind of cool to see, like, yeah. this crazy 4K, like, awesome, like, droid era stuff yeah. getting smashed down. What was awesome was, uh, they been long enough. People yeah. forgot the prequel. Well, they just yeah. started, it was like, oh, there's a separatist ship trying to leave. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what they're like, yeah, yeah, there's a separatist ship, and oh, yeah. But it, but then you turn a corner, and there's, like, some, like, more, like, modern stormtrooper stuff. Like, it, they do a good job of blending the two eras mm-hmm. together. I'm, overall, I'm very happy. I'm very excited to play through this game. Uh, it's just funny how e- EA and everything with them, they needed to get this yeah. right. Yeah, the, I give EA almost zero credit for this. Well, yeah, um, I know, but, because, saying, but it's no, cool. No. It's, it sounds, across the board, if people have problems with the game, whatever, it sounds like a good Star Wars game. Came it, out. it is a good game. I can already tell just what level but I have to say, it has hit me at an interesting time where I have, arriving at my house within six days of each other, a game in Death Stranding that is unlike anything I've ever yeah. played. 
and then a game in Star Wars that I can't help but think of all the other well, games the other that kind stuff, yeah. of it's kind of like a greatest hits of this generation yeah. in terms of gameplay and map. But I and think the way... compared to what all this other crap we've gone through this generation, oh, yeah. Star Wars games, oh, it's way better. Uh, oh, we, I, we, we needed this. Finally, we, got, we like, needed it. We, we need a single player one. Star Wars game. So I cool. most games I've played in a month and a long time. Yeah, That's crazy. Yep. Um, I am playing right now the game again called The Outer Worlds. Mm-hmm. Um, it's an RPG. I'm playing it on my PC. It is made by Obsidian. Do you guys know much about yes. it? Have you guys looked into it at all? Uh, I've heard you talk about it. Of It's kind of like Fallout meets other stuff. Yeah, I think that I expected it to be... What did you say? Fallout meets something else. I forgot what it so it, it's, it's actually not that much like Fallout. Um, not as much as I thought it would be because when you hear Fallout you think like big open world you know you're running around doing kind of whatever quests for NPCs with some cool world building this game is way more similar to Mass Effect 1 if you remember Mass Effect 1 like you start out in like an area and then you go to like a city area and you get a ship and then there's like three planets you go to to, and when you go to them it's like it doesn't actually feel like a planet. It feels like a cool biome, like a cool like snow or whatever. And there's some animals running around and there's like a base yeah. and then there's like some outside area. Yeah. So this is like that where like you go to these different hubs basically. There's no real open world, but like you'll get somewhere and it'll be like an area with like yeah. a town in the middle. And, many, and the how town long have you been playing this? Um, I think I'm at 12 hours, 12 hours and I think that you can beat it in 20. Oh, wow. So that is one. So that's number one. One of the things I really am appealed to about it is, is I know I'm over halfway mm-hmm. and it has the depth of, uh, so let's take it back. Like the best way I could really describe this is first person, just like a fallout game would yeah. be it's stat based. So it's a lot like a fallout three. Mm-hmm. Um, you have a slowdown mechanic. It's not like VATS where like you full on select body parts, but you can press a button to slow everything down, or you can just shoot. And yeah. the few shooting mechanics are good; they work. Mm-hmm. Um, Do you like the shooting? The shooting. Yeah, it feels stuff? good. It feels good. It feels really responsive on PC, and I play a lot of Destiny, so like I can feel it if it doesn't feel right. Yeah. And this feels it's, good. Um, Destiny's like the peak. Yeah, yeah, it feels good. Um, I enjoy the gunplay. Yeah. Um, I'm serious. Where? I'm not where it's different than Fallout significantly is in the way that the map is and that you're going to different little locations rather than just one big world map, which I actually vastly prefer. Mm-hmm. Dude, I'm old. Like, I got room for, like, two giant open world games yeah. a year. Like, mm-hmm. and honestly, not really looking for the outer worlds to give me that. And so it's not even wasting my time with that. It sees more. But the other thing is, is it's a lot like Mass Effect where every time you get off your ship, you've got like these six silhouettes of crew members. Yeah. So I have five out of the six crew members and they're people you just meet along the game and you can have them join your party. You can kick them out. Um, But they are awesome. The crew members are awesome. So you always run around with two, two crew members. You can nice. run around solo. They've got finisher moves. So like you can press it and they give funny quips or they say things. I, so far, they are five for five. Like they are memorable characters. They're, this game doesn't do the dumb like Rage 2 or whatever. Like we're funny and wacky yeah. and like like us yeah. thing. Like I feel like a lot of games nowadays do. They're just like really well written characters that are fun and they're interesting. Like one, basically the the, the setup for the game is it starts up, you wake up, this crazy like scientist man. He reminds me of the guy from Back to the Future. Is like we got to get you out of here. This yeah. is this is not good. Basically, there's Earth and Earth sent colonists out to basically in a Terra two. Like they found a, a planet that could be inhabited, so they sent these ships that were owned by these corporations. Yeah. So the corporations on Earth sent their representatives to be basically the companies there. Mm-hmm. So it's all company ram. But basically, they sent all these ships out there and a ship got stuck kind of like out in like the rift area and so the people that were cryogenically frozen on the ship were just left basically to 
be in space forever. So the scientist wakes you up and says, you've been on this ship for the last 80 years. The planet that they were going to has been inhabited now for the last 80 years. There are these you know, five or six different warring companies that are all like one makes like all the food, one makes all the guns and they all like have their weird little branding and stuff. They're like, they are content to leave you out here, but like we have things we need to do. I'm bringing you out. So basically you get off the ship and you land on this other planet and immediately people are like, who are you? And you're like, you even tell them like, oh, I came from that ship. And they're like, you're out of your mind. That's not a thing. Like there's nobody up there. And so like you start to learn about what's going on in this first town and there's a guy that runs the town and there's people that have left the town and it's a lot like Fallout 3 where it's like do I help the these people or do yeah. I help those people this game has full dialogue options like full like yeah. six options skill checks like everything you could want to do you can do you can't always do like you can do what you can think of but then like things will have consequences yeah, so but because it's like limited in scope they really execute well on that so it's fun man it's i've had a blast it's great it's really good science fiction it's kind of like science fiction kind of like a wild west kind of feel um the companies and like the people that work for companies are funny like one of the guys in my party is a vicar so he's like a priest basically in this yeah. world but the religion is all around capitalism and like mm -hmm be trusting like the way and trusting like the way of capitalism and but then like you get to know him and he's like totally a sham and like he's actually like he broke out of prison and he's posing as like uh like a like a but so every you find out everything he's been saying is just a bunch of crap and like he it's just it's awesome so like I, I have this game what's cool about this game is xbox gave it out on game pass yeah it's on free. game pass so i'm so, playing it for you yeah, know i have it i have it queued up and i'm like man you're on my list. Like, I'm yeah. going to get to you. Like, the, the how long to beat on it is 20 hours. Um, if you really want to just do everything, it's probably like 30. Um, and honestly, it reminds me. Uh, their first game since they've gotten purchased by Microsoft. Yeah, but they were already they were making this. Yeah. All, but, but um, yeah, and so I, I highly recommend it. Nice. Um, I would say it's a rock solid, like, really fun throwback to like some of my favorite RPGs but what I like is they know that it's a throwback so they're not trying to weigh you down with like 100 hours of content like nice. it's fun it's a great time um, I wouldn't say there's anything about it that like blows my mind but it's just cool to see a game like that come out in 2019 oh, it's definitely on my list I'm gonna get to it especially in an era where Bioware and Bethesda have seemed to Obsidian survived for years making spin-off sequels of Bio or Bethesda games. They made Knights of the Old Republic 2. Mm -hmm. They made Fallout New Vegas. Like, And nowadays, I don't know when we're ever going to get another good Bioware RPG. Mm -hmm. Probably never. I don't know when we're ever going to get another good Bethesda RPG. Maybe never. Mm -hmm. Like, So it's just cool that Obsidian's kind of picking up the torch and it's like, no, like these are good types of games. There's a reason why you like these kinds of games. And well, doing it. Good type of game. You you like you like party based games. It's a no brainer. That's for what I mean. You. I, I, Mass Effect. And I think you would have fun with it. I think the fact that it's um, shorter, you might like. But mm -hmm. I, you know, I, if you're interested, check it out. But I'm excited because again, I want to I want to revisit I want to revisit Mass Effect. But I, I want to play Outer Worlds. I heard of a lot of great things. Plus, Obsidian's involved, and I really like them. Yeah. So I'm I want to get into that. But there are things that are happening, people. Revival is happening. Half-Life 3? Revival is coming to this country. Yeah. Half-Life 3? Half-Life 3. Half-Life 3. Half-Life. It finally got announced, except... It's not. It's, it's not, not called Half-Life 3. But to me, I don't even care. <laughs> like, to be completely honest, I know some people... I saw a little bit of that sentiment out there. Number one, this freaking release trailer looks... Yeah, it uh, looks great. Unbelievable. So Half-Life Alex was announced... Valve is back in the game development seat. They've Gabe Newell got off the Steam seat for one second. <laughs> Sounds like a fancy it's, toilet or something. <laughs> it really was the fancy toilet, the Steam seat. Um, now he's on the game development seat with Half Life Alex, and uh, it is a VR Half Life game. Hey, and, praise God! And, Let's go! And uh, yeah, it looked freaking great. It looked hey, really, it look, the graphics. It looks good, but on the other side, I went, I guess I'm playing this at Jacob's house or whoever has the beefiest hey. computer, because uh, that looks really good. It looks really good for me. I can't wait. If I try to play it, it's going to go 15 frames. It's going to go Pokemon level 
frame rate I, if I try to play it. I can't wait because, you know, you create a platform that is a niche platform in VR, and people who have VR are people who can afford it and can do certain things, and they're like, we need to sell more of these. How are you going to sell more of these? Give them the most demanded thing since, you know, 2005. Yeah. Half life. Yeah. I here's the thing. Half, <laughs> Half Life Three. I I understand why Valve has not dipped into it because there's two two things really. One, the crazy expectation and the fan thing at all. Yeah. I still think it's wrong that they committed to making an episode three for the yeah. DLC series and they just never did it. I think that's not right by your consumer to yeah. say. Buy one, buy two. Three's coming out later this year, two thousand seven, well, and they just episode two's cliffhanger. They end and they said like there are there are videos you can watch where they're like episode three coming out later this year. We already have it. We're already done with it basically. Or and they never released it. I think that's wrong. But here is the thing that I feel like has always made me okay with the fact that they weren't doing it. Outside of the fact, I think it's wrong to say you're doing something and then just not do it. Hey, they didn't do it, but it's okay. But but I, why I understand, which is. And I wish more developers did this. Valve is very clear that they don't want to make a game that doesn't have some kind of gameplay innovation. Mm -hmm. And and that is true. They have never put out a fart box. Okay, well, here's, you know, dumb fourth or fifth game in this series because it'll make us some money. So they, it's always been kind of unsaid, but it's been kind of understood like, Half-Life 2, Half-Life 2 Episode 1, Half-Life 2 Episode 2, they kind of perfected like first-person shooter in a two-dimensional. And let's be honest, first-person two-dimensional like shooters haven't actually come that far since Half-Life 2. I played Half-Life 2 a couple years ago. It feels like a modern shooter Mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Like aim down sights <laughs> and yeah. like but like really truly like but it definitely the, felt like time it's been 15 years it's time so but even like Alex, it's, it's like, time but even in like a a regular shooter I don't know what they would do but what got me so excited I don't care if you call it Half-Life 3 I don't care if you call it Half-Life yeah. Alex I don't care if you call it Half-Life 3 and it's a prequel I don't care if you call it Half-Life Alex and it takes place after Half-Life. I don't care what it yeah. is it's in the Half-Life universe it's very clear that it is a full campaign. This isn't yeah. like a two-hour treatment no. or like a teaser. Like This is a game, a full game. And number three, when they were talking about the game, they said, we took Half-Life 2 assets, we just started building things, and then we jumped into it with our VR sets, with Half-Life 2 guns and Half-Life 2 assets and Half-Life 2 enemies, yeah. and we were getting excited about the gameplay opportunities we were discovering. And they said that that is what the momentum was, that they just came up with thing after thing after thing, and then they said, well, what if we strung it together like this? And then they built out more, and they said the gameplay and what they were excited about discovering drove the project. Mm-hmm. That gets me excited because that's what makes the first Half Life game special. Yeah. Is it's this like you are from A to Z in first person going yeah. through that whole world. It feels like a real facility. Mm-hmm. And and then in Half Life Two, they introduce the physics and the exploring yeah. the open areas and stuff. So the fact that they're really going all in. And if you watch a trailer, there's cool things like okay, what are the strengths of VR? Like okay, it's not running around. Clearly, you're moving around in the game. But one of the things I like is they showed where it looked like your hand will get like committed to something with like this glove. And then like you're like you have to stay here and yeah. you're like shooting and hiding and shooting like yeah. that is creative like yeah. to keep your hand stuck somewhere and do this or or like running around and you're grabbing ammo off of a shelf and loading it and yeah. stuff like I am. I'm all in. I'm going to upgrade I'm my card. Play, play I'm probably going to get a headset. I get a headset, man. Yeah, um, I think it's exciting. I can get it, but I'm playing at 10 frames per second, and I'm puking and playing half light. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I my did, hand would have to keep on the trash can as I'm I, puking. I was instantly impressed because the, when the video showed me, it could have been like I don't know if it was gameplay or not, whatever you want to call it. But um, the best thing about VR that's been the best thing about VR, but that isn't the best thing is they haven't made a world where it's truly everything is interactable. Yeah, everything has always been like you can touch this stuff, but you can't touch this stuff. Oh, that's a good point. And when when they show off the trailer, what they showed off was if you touch it, you move it. But that's their thing. And they've like, done that with physics. And I'm like, bro, that's like when he went yeah. and proved that shelf, and he went and was throwing chairs out. I'm like, 
this is it. I'm like, this yeah. is what we needed. I want to be able to grab thing. I want to be able to grab a shelf and throw it in front of the door and keep yep. people from coming in. Yep. Like, so buy Half Life Alex so we can get Half Life. And, and so here's the thing: is we've talked about this exact scenario. Valve's all in on VR. Yeah. Everybody wants more Half Life. They make such great gameplay. It's in our dweebs. E- everything. It, yeah. Everything oh, about yeah. this is exactly what we all wanted, hoped, thought might happen. The only thing that's different is it's not Half Life Three. But I don't even care. Like, I legitimately don't care. They're even returning to it a character. Been, it would have been very nice. And yeah. I think they had a crazy opportunity to do that, to continue that story. We but did. it took the pressure yeah. off them to not do that, yeah. which maybe will result in a better game. And maybe sure. they can take what they learned from this and make Half-Life 3. Yeah. Regardless, the gameplay, without the story stuff, the core of it, yeah, oh, we finally get Half-Life in a VR thing. But is, cool. it, is it safe to say without spoiling anything? Because I haven't finished Episode 2, but I'm going to ask it anyway because I've had a million years. Without saying the literal ending, I'm getting the impression that the cliffhanger at the end of episode two kind of involves Alex as a character, right? Like, it involves her. So, like, it's not even like we're getting some Beyond Good and Evil spinoff where it's a prequel and it's, like, people we don't even recognize and it's a different planet. This is between two or... yeah. Like, uh, we're focusing, two, yeah. I know it's earlier, but, like, we're narrowing in on the character that we're already interested in, you know? So no cussing apes, like, beyond good. G-Man's there, <laughs> and, yeah, so. I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm, but they got Campo Santo and Joseph Gordon-Levitt to do all the, <laughs> to do all the cutscenes of the game, so. Yeah, that's true, press record. Only one of those things is true, but. You know, uh, what, one, last, get, one last gaming thing. I was going to say, you know what you won't get Half-Life Alex on? Google Stadia. Yeah. I'm just saying. And that's it on Google Stadia. It's hot Next, uh, no. So Google Stadia did come out, and um, I was I was going back. I had saw, uh, there was a tweet earlier I tweeted, and I, I don't know if I put it in our group chat. Yeah. But I forgot about this. The guy that launched the Xbox One... Ooh, I yeah. saw that. And Stadia and uh, Rockin' from X4 was before it, was it the, hit. Oh, yeah, said, oh, yeah, it was. And he said, oh, gosh. He was like, I didn't even realize this. What it, This poor man. He is the Grim Reaper of console <laughs> launches. If he is launching your console, it's a failure. Like, this is not going to be good. So Google Stadia come out, came out, and it sounds like there's just not much there. There was promises made and things saying oh it'll be down like right now you you can't do wi-fi unless you're on here is the thing right now there's that, just weird things that they yeah. compromise to get this thing out i would i would almost borderline say this is an early access not even just because of the tech issues <laughs> yeah. here's the problem the whole point of google stadia was you don't need the box yep. just buy the game on chrome yep. and you can access anywhere Supposedly, that will still be true eventually, but right now, because I, day of, I was like, hey, Destiny 2 is free to play. Mm. Google Stadia has a free option. I don't care about Stadia, but I'll sign up for Stadia just so I can access yeah. Destiny 2 anywhere if I ever need to hop on and buy something because it's only, like, the, there's certain vendors that only sell things certain days. Yeah. It's like, oh, I can go in here and grab these mods and I don't have to worry. You grab it on your computer. So desktop. I Googled for, like, an hour trying to figure out, and I found out, oh, like, okay, the free layer isn't out yet, which I think is a huge missed opportunity because I think that the only way they're really going to grow the user base yeah. is people being able to just sign up for Stadia yeah. regular. And then play free-to-play games or yeah. buy a game and try it out. There's a paywall right now of $160. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who is paying $160? Yeah. Because it's not even like you're getting a box now. And you're not getting exclusive You're paying games, $160 yeah. for a controller long, and yeah. the right to buy games. Yeah. So... Bad launch. Yeah. I here's I think where I maybe we've clashed in the past is <laughs> you <remember>. think Google <laughs> is going to just dip Let's out. Let's rewind back. You think Google might just dip out after a year? Yes. I'm telling you, this is going to be at least a five year commitment. Oh my gosh! Let's, no. Let's, all right, let's go back and watch this in a couple. Of, I I think that I okay. I don't think it's shutting down. No, Google. Google drop this. And they're going to try it for a year, and they're going to pull their hats out. I don't think so. I think I don't they, think we're so. getting Xbox controllers, and that's what you're buying. My now. prediction still stays the same. In three years, we will not be talking about. Then I'll Google take Stadia, that. Google I, I, I think in three years it will still exist. That's my <laughs> argument. Uh, will someone be there playing? 
Who knows? Do you I, think it but, will be shut down in three years? Uh, either dying or shut down. No one will be. It will be gone. Soon. Ooh, I mean, dying is kind of a, <laughs> a will, wide okay. term. Okay, Google, uh, Google Plus. For the last, three I'm not years, asking for two, a whole rundown now, of the okay. past. I'm asking, will it be dead in Look three years? Look at Google Plus. That's where it will be at. Stand, take a stand. Do you think it will be dead in three years? I think it will be shut down in the, within three years. Okay. Cool. Perfect. I will take that bet. <laughs> <laughs> I do not think it will be shut down. Okay. I think it's going to have an awful first six months. I think it's going to go free. And I think that when the new consoles launch, parents are not going to want to buy their kids a $500 console. Okay. They're going to see that they can sign up for free on, on Stadia. And they're going to say, hey, that game you want to play? Let's just buy it on Chrome and try it out. I think that there are going to be parents that do that, and I think that they will find a niche. And I think that the streaming technology will continue to get a little bit better. It's never going to be our first choice, but I do think that Stadia is going to be around in three years. Here's another reason why I don't think that. When... and. I know I'm comparing a little bit of apples and oranges, but this still is a similar scenario, and I'll tie it back to gaming. When Google Plus came out, they had some really awesome stuff. You could group stuff out of, like, you couldn't... Finally, my grandma wouldn't see these freaking terrible lyrics I would post. I could put little circles and stuff. Facebook immediately added that. All these people started to, like, adopt these same kind of things, and it kind of just died off. It didn't whatever. Microsoft's about to launch something crazy with their... Their kind of online cloud stuff. Sony is already doing already, it. Already has PlayStation now, and they're making it better and stuff. And I think, I think people already in their mind recognize an Xbox and Sony stuff. And now Google's trying to and that add another thing. I think they just have more clout. And Xbox is already doing an incredible job with their Game Pass stuff. I think they're going to be kind of pushed out the same way Google Plus is just like kind of just got forgotten about yeah. and google is just notorious I, I still hold to this as a in the software <laughs> side they just drop stuff they kill stuff well they the do people love. i'm not saying that they do they've killed yeah. some of my favorite things that i like that aren't even from google they yeah. buy it and then they kill it and they don't even use that stuff yeah. elsewhere i just think that's headed that way but here's the reason why i think that they're going to fight for this thing and they're really going to keep working on it until they find whatever their version of success is here's why google plus is a great example, right? They wanted a social media network. Well, why do you want to have a social media network as a business? What is your mo- what is you have to monetarily data. gain? Data. Perfect, right? So, Facebook gets their data from Facebook. Yeah. Google was trying to get into the data industry and yeah. owning people's data. It wasn't working, but then they probably realized, "Oh, wait, oh wait, oh wait." We already have their data. They use Google. <laughs> they don't need your data. They yeah. have your email. They have your data. So the revenue stream for them to to for their for their they're a publicly traded company. Their revenue stream to get rid of Google Plus wasn't really affected. It does not affect their earning potential. Does not affect any specific revenue stream. Right. Yeah. So they can still get data. They have another way to get data. Right. For movies. They sell movies on their Google Play Store, and they show movies on YouTube, and they've integrated those things together. They have a way to make money off of the movie industry and off of video content. They have music. They have a way to make money and engage in the space of music, and they can continue to work on those things and show growth. They don't have that for video games right now. Video games are an extremely profitable industry. And especially with VR and the way things are going, things are only going to become more and more profitable. Google, as a publicly traded company, does not have the option of sitting out of an entire third of entertainment. Mm -hmm. They don't have that choice. They don't don't have that option. They might launch and it might suck, but they can't pull out because that is admitting to investors, hey, guys, the video game game thing, it's just tough. Mm -hmm. It's just tough. That's just a third of entertainment we're not going to be engaged in. No, that is never going to fly with their shareholders. So it might not be perfect, but they're going to—they're in it for the long haul because they don't have a Google search engine to fall back on like they did with Google Plus with data. And these other smaller things they kill off is because they're agile and they're trying to make something work. But if it doesn't work, they just get rid of it. And they may change the name. They may have to rebrand. They may abandon streaming. I, I don't think that they will, but they want to make money off of that stream of revenue of video games and gaming and interactive media. And they're not going to just leave it. 
because they don't have that option. They have Which, publicly traded companies have to continue to grow and they have to show that they can grow and do new things. Which I understand because they, they had to do that within the cell phone industry. That's why sure. They, I mean, that's why they jumped in. The, that's yeah. why they're even doing that now with the internet branding. Yeah. You know, even with Google Fi, and they're trying to show off like, hey, look, we can, you know, we can do Wi Fi and we yeah. can do fiber. Um, so I get, I get where you're coming from. You can attempt it all day. Whether or not it's successful, I think is my question. I think we have to answer. But success to me, I think, I think in Google's mind, if they just launch the product and have any kind of a user base after six months, that's a success. And the reason I believe that is because if you look at the fart box of a rollout this has been, they have indicated that there is no sense of urgency to them one, that this is their only chance. One thing I'll challenge you on, I agree. That's a good point. They about the, seem about the music, so about the music, about, it. about the music and stuff. But if we're doing 4K60 and people are streaming to these servers, I think... As, as much money as Google does have, do you think it's a little bit of a different investment of all these different servers and all these crazy graphics cards versus Google has ungodly, ungodly. They they have, the, King Solomon would weep at the amount of money they have. But, uh, no, I don't think that it is keeping them up at night but, at all. Here, no, 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 no. Because the, the potential profit you know is what? so much. You know what changed my mind? And, and I'll talk about it in a second. Here's why I think... People maybe, like maybe, you and me maybe, worry maybe, about maybe stuff th- like maybe that. Maybe think about it again because me and Chelsea have been watching uh, the Imagineer story sure. on Disney Plus, and in that Disney had so much ungodly amount of cash, and they were having to like cut corners on stuff on their parks. And I always just think they have so much freaking money. So even Google, yes, they have so much money and whatever. I think you would be interested to see the behind the doors well, kind of thing. Well, no, no, no. Not, I don't mean to say they don't care and they're just throwing yeah. money away. A, co- a corporation that size, they nickel and dime every yeah, last yeah, thing. Of they have I'm to. not saying that they're careless yeah. with their money. I'm just saying. I'm just saying that could add up to one where it's like we got to abandon I'm saying this the thing. user base is not such that the investment on the hardware end has to be ungodly. Do you understand? Like that's why they're not worrying if their launch numbers aren't. 100 million yeah. users day one, that would actually be the worst thing for them. What they want is somebody using it so they can collect data, see what's working, see what's not working, make the changes they need to. And if they can show for the next 18 quarters, for the next four years, if they can show quarter to quarter growth, they're happy with that. Yeah. And they have unimaginable amount of backing that as long as they show growth, I think that if, if I'm the pre- people in charge of Stadia, I'm not trying for a huge launch because if 100 million people use it and they hate it, then they're going to be at 2 million the next month. What if zero and people are using it and they hate it? Well, <laughs> but I don't think zero people are using it, it because I, I, there are early adopters. Yeah. And people, right now, they're focused on the early adopters, keeping them enthusiastic. The thing the, the, That's the, why the this launch, thing is not going to be killed this thing, in one the year. The smell of it. They don't smell. It smells they want like that ooh yeah. Mom money. Sm- I smell some ooh yeah. Ooh yeah. No. I smell some ooh yeah. They want that mom money. They want that mom money. They want those moms. They, uh, they want that mom money. Don't we all? They want that money where <sighs> two years from now, when the PS5 is four hundred fifty dollars, one year left, and 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 a parent can say, okay. Assassin's Creed China Boogaloo just came out. <laughs> okay? And it's a PS5 exclusive Xbox uh, Xbox uh, Yeah, they better I buy you Xbox be soft XYZ it. exclusive or I could pay $60 with our Google Chrome account and they can stream it. And my 5th grader ain't even going to know the Where's difference. Where's the moms at for the launch? The, the moms aren't doing it cuz they don't have the free option yet. <laughs> I I <laughs> Here's where I'm gonna I have say, a good point about the revenue stream. <laughs> I'm gonna say my final piece before we go any deeper into this. Um, a lot of great points. I'm gonna be the mediator here. A lot of great points here, guys. Three years from when? Three years. Okay, but you said that a long time ago. So when are we starting? Three years since launch. Three years since okay, launch. Okay, that's yeah. awesome. There's, Do I get a name change? I'm sorry, okay. I'll keep well, let me say this. Do I get a name change? I stand by. I'll this take the bet as is. Really I'll like. take the bet as is. But my only Relax. question is: is when we say shut down, does that if they? If they keep the service live and they never take it down, but they do a rebranding, <laughs> I just need to know. We have a reboot. Mirror's Edge style. No, no, no. It's called Mirror's I'll Edge. I'll give you, if they shut it down even for a month and then they relaunch, that's not the same thing. 
but if they rebrand in some way or they pivot it, it's still streaming. It's still Google and games. I would say that that, that counts as staying alive. Yeah. How many reboot, reboots are they allowed? <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, twenty twenty five. I'll We're just let's just say Stadia Google three. Stadia, or at least what Google Stadia in effect represents, which is Google in gaming in streaming. I, my Google bet gaming. is just for Google Stadia. If they reboot it, that's a whole different thing. That doesn't mean they're I'm whatever. But uh, to I'm the just, extent of even if they just change the name. I'm literally saying... If they literally say, now we're Google the Stadia X. The literally, the existing platform that they're making now will be gone within three well, Of course it will be. That's a no-brainer. Well, this is where I just... The platform is just the website. PlayStation Now is still around, and that didn't go as whatever, but that's still around since 2008. But yeah, because they've, it's, they've it's changed, changed things it. about they've it. Cha- it I, I'm okay with changing. You can change Google <laughs> Stadia. Changing. But you're saying, you're saying rebranding and rebooting the oh, whole what thing. If, what if they come out and say, like, hey, we're now Google Gaming? And yeah, that's, like, that's what, what I'm talking about. Like, okay. if, they, if they change the name and they're like, Stadia, maybe it makes people think that they don't know how to get into it. But, like, the website's the same. All your purchases are still there. It's just Google Gaming. It's just Google Gaming. My or, bet, my let's bet. say, hey, now it's like a Netflix subscription. Description, but it's still Stadia. My, whatever they want to do, that's fine. But my bet is you just think Google my, will be out of my, game streaming. My years. bet is just for the the Google Stadia, whatever whatever it is now. If they reboot it and rethink whatever it's called Stadia X, then my bet doesn't exist. I think that. they'll change. I'm just it saying a year from half an hour. I, I do, but that's a, that's like. I don't know, but I also don't want us to. I don't want to lose this bet <laughs> because well, you're because they the rebranded side. something. But here's but my where, point still stands. Here's where it's not the Ouya, and the reason it's not the Ouya. It's not the Ouya. They, 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 they have they have no, zeros no, upon zeros. That's like saying China has <laughs> more backing than they freaking. They have more backing than Ouya. Um, yeah. In regards of like what they're trying to accomplish, <laughs> I do 100 percent agree that. They are under projecting this to shareholders because all they have to do is show that, hey, here's what we launched. Uh, we posted a net loss. Okay, well, it's a launch. Okay, cool. And then next quarter, say, oh, we have a 4% increase. Oh, that's cool. That's that's awesome. I, I, well, get which, I know increase. what board wow. people want. I know what boards want. Yeah. Are we losing at this? Oh, we lost four months in a row. Cut it. Well, oh, we're winning at this? I'm, okay, I'm cool. staking Keep my it. flag three years from now. We will not... You'll be talking about the next Xbox. The I next I was originally with you until you said your definition of it. Now I'm against you. Okay, that's fine. I, I do think that will hey, be brand we'll or something two, different a year and hey, a half. Hey, two from dunce now. caps. I'll, I'll, oh we'll my find god! We'll in three years, we'll be doing caps. hangouts on Stadia. <laughs> 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 hey guys, thanks for joining. We're doing some hangouts. Thanks oh for joining man, for that that was I wasn't ready for this. Yeah. This wasn't where I was thinking we were going to go. So yeah, man. Google Stadia. I am done with games. <laughs> god. <laughs> I'm logging out from games, and I'm logging in to streaming platforms, just like the Stadia. But we're streaming television. Disney Plus. And we have a new streaming, we have two new streaming platforms. One, I don't think anybody has, Apple Plus. Does anybody use that? No. What? That is just... I'm not going to be here in three years. <laughs> maybe, no. Well, I think you don't, you I don't think, use it? No. You I'm an, don't I'm an Apple use head, Apple Plus. But listen... Netflix, Hulu, all these other ones, you have to have something that draws me in that makes me want to... Disney Plus and Apple Plus, and Ap- Di- Apple was never winning that. They have no IP, oh, yeah. and Disney but has all the Zach IP. Zach doesn't use Apple Plus. Yeah, I know, he, I know, but that just... I'm not even surprised. That's how little I think of Apple yeah, Plus. There's, there's nothing on there that I care about, so... You don't want to watch Jennifer Aniston and the 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 word? Yeah, what's it called? The, the what? What's it called? Newsies? The news. Newsheads. Channel 12. No, I got that on <laughs> everywhere. Uh, yeah. That wasn't working out, but um, I've been watching Silicon Valley. It's on its final season, mm. and I feel with the show, there's still funny moments. I'm glad this is the final season. I, I think even last season would have been too soon. I think to cut it out, but now like it's been cool to see the whole show is about the startup that's kind of become this crazy thing and trying to like it makes fun of all the stuff going on in Silicon Valley. So now they're kind of at the final frontier of like what. To become like a Facebook now. Is it predominantly like, like common, like or comedy? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's Mike Judge who did oh. King of the Hill and all this other stuff. Oh, so there is some still really funny like gags, especially during the beginning of the season, or whatever. But uh, yeah, really uh, just having a good time and it's It's not down. animated, is it? No, it's live action. Mike but, Judge, live action. Yep. So laughing having a good time Silicon Valley I knew it wasn't but like you said King of the Hill and I was just like wait yeah. am I just have I always been picturing a different yeah. show okay Watchmen 
I said I'd get back with you. Am should I, I watch man? Am I enjoying? We should do watch man. Uh, no. It's. I'm still <laughs> on the fence, and I'm like four episodes in. There is still like some of the stuff they're introducing and, and showing is kind of lost. Like it still has that kind of thing that's still drawing me in. So I'm still watching it. My wife really likes it. Uh, I'm still trying to figure this, out. There's still the Watchmen. Like yeah, the comic. Well, it's not the a, comic. So they, it's, it's the they whole, made an HBO show yeah, based on that. But. It's not based on the comic. It's, it's in that world. It has that, nothing to do the with the world. comic. Yeah, it's not. Uh, it's not. It, it goes on its own thing. But it's wait, made, I thought they made a movie called The Watchmen. There's a there's, there's a yeah. graphic novel run of comics called Watchmen. There's a movie by Zack Snyder that is a basically changing that into a movie to the most that you really can, and it wasn't very good. And then this is a series, a TV show made by the guy that made Leftovers and Lost. And it is based on... They have the same characters. They have the same stuff it, in the world. That it, they're yeah, to. it's based on that same world, but it's later, I think. Yeah. It's after the movie right. or in the book. And I think they've even, like, kind of even pushed it further from that. Like, there's stuff in the world, but it's its own... Really yeah. Exi- it's almost like a Final Fantasy game. Kind I of thought really they were cool. done with this. Like, I, thought, I didn't think anyone wanted to touch this after, like, won the movie. Because I remember the movie being hot no, trash. They brought it back and... and as much as I'm still trying to wrestle with it, it is cool what they're doing with some of those characters I knew even from the movie and stuff. And I, I know at least some of these names and stuff that they're doing is pretty cool. Like, some of the the, the world-building stuff is absolutely there from, you know, mm. Damon Lindelof and all that stuff. So, really uh, liking it more in some ways, still confused. It's like, the dialogue's gotten better. The dialogue... Uh, has not dipped as much, but there's still some stuff I'm like, eh, I don't know. So yeah, on the fence. World building is awesome. World building is really cool. So yeah, I'll uh, I'll jump one last one. Uh, the toys that made us on Netflix. So they've had two other seasons. This is the third season. They did Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Talking about how they got to making those toys and the creators and stuff. Mm-hmm. Really highly recommend that if that's that's like my childhood Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's also a Little Pony, My Little Pony, and wrestling action figures and stuff in there. Mm-hmm. It's really cool to find out the behind the scenes like deals and background deals yeah. that they had to do to get that. Really interesting. So much so that they made a spinoff show called The Movies That Made Us. I and, saw that recently. And I that, watched that one last out. night of Home Alone. That also is this behind the scenes stuff I love. So these shows are like, oh, I'm just over the moon yeah. for these shows. That's cool. Awesome. So really, I would recommend if you like any of that stuff. What channel is or what, not channel, what platform is the movies that made us on? Uh, Netflix. Oh, okay, well cool. Towards the That's why VH1 did that stuff. Well, I'm just kidding. Throw your Netflix in the garbage can. Okay. I got Disney Plus. Uh, and it's awesome. Yeah. It's really cool. Am I the only one here that has Disney Plus? I have it, haven't started it yet because you know, Deb and Can I just say my wife made the worst deal ever to get Disney Plus? So, do you share your accounts with anybody? I, I mean, they even freaking have different yeah. accounts you can have. So, we had Netflix, or we had Netflix, and my wife's sister. They were talking on the phone. Hey, we got Disney Plus. And my wife did not know how much this was. It's only six dollars. It's the price of a freaking Happy Meal. Yeah. Every month. Netflix is seventeen dollars. We pay for that. Yeah. yeah. Why? Is, Netflix is way too much. And my wife came in. She said, "I was willing and dealing, and I got us a Disney Plus." And I was like, "Oh, what'd you do?" I was talking with my sister, and she has Disney Plus. And I told her, "I'll give you our Netflix if you give us the <laughs> Disney Plus." <laughs> And we and she said yes, and we've got Disney Plus now. And I said, Disney Plus is six dollars. We're paying. I, I want, I've been wanting to cancel Netflix. Yeah. For for weeks, I've been like going back and forth with you. And she was like, Oh, I didn't know how much Disney Plus was. <laughs> she, she thought it was like twenty dollars. Well, not stuff, only that. Else, so we've been laughing about that. Of like, I have great willing and dealing. With yeah, you. I and I have to go back sure and make sure everything's connected. But I had Hulu Plus, so my mom and them have Netflix. Yeah. I use that. So last year, I don't even watch Hulu that much. I wanted to watch one thing on it, but I subscribed. My mom was like, oh, I really want to watch a bunch of different stuff on Hulu. And I was like, here's what I'll do. I'll keep the Hulu subscription because there might be things I want on there. Yeah. And then I'll use the Netflix and then we'll share. So that's what we've been doing. Um, 
And then my Sharing brother, is caring way has been good my brother, and my sister levels. currently don't pull any weight, but you know, we'll <laughs> see. <laughs> maybe we'll see. I don't know. But whatever um, our next plat- streaming platform comes out, yeah, um, maybe you can get their stadia. Subscription. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you guys get me Xbox Game Pass. Um, <laughs> but all that being said, uh, Hulu Plus, if you have it, when they released Disney Plus, they did a like a special where. Yeah. You can get Hulu, Disney, and ESPN Plus all for eleven ninety nine. That's a cool deal. I was playing. I was paying eleven oh five for Hulu Plus, so I signed up for it. But it's weird. <coughs> it makes you make an account for every single one that's its own account. And I did get charged for Disney like three dollars, like at the start of the month. I think it was just because it was prorated or something weird. So I got to go back and make sure everything's coming out yeah. the right way. Oh gosh, because I don't know for sure. But I, I, know I heard that, about that though. But that's a freaking amazing deal. It is. And one little thing because. The show you're talking talk about, I, I didn't watch, but um, one other thing with Disney Plus is, I so she was my wife pulled it up and we were looking at we she's been watching ungodly amounts of Disney stuff. She loves Disney yeah. and she's having a great time. And we've been watching the Imagineer story. It goes about the story of Disney and stuff. That's yeah. been awesome. Just watch that if you're into Disney stuff. I've been having a great time with that. But. I turn it on and I flip through it for the first time and I got really quick there's a there's a there's a section called out of the vault and I just had to sit and go wow because I grew up in the 90s in this time when we had commercials it's like it's out of the Disney vault for a limited amount of time before it goes back in the vault Disney would pay out movies in this video store, because you can only have so, so much shelf yep. space as well in these retail stores, they'd put out a lab and they'd put out this, and then they'd go back. Yep. Are these older movies from the yep. 70s and 60s? And then and you them, couldn't and then buy you couldn't them. get them anymore. So when I saw that, and it was called Out of the Vault, and I was scrolling through every single... Did they have every and single thing? There. I just went, wow. Because I came from a time when you couldn't get that stuff. Yeah. Like, it, 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 I came from a time of blockbusters and that is where stores, like, and I went I went man this generation doesn't really know what that even means fully the weight of that mm-hmm. you know they just don't understand so and that is where Disney has pulled out all the stops yeah. when you want to talk about like because we talk about like Nintendo like they should do like a Netflix for games yeah. on the Switch and it was it, it's yeah. just been this whole thing of like well, you know, our yeah. premium old games are like, we'll do it, but we'll only put certain games on it. Like, Disney put it all out there. Yeah. They dropped they dropped it all, and they just said, look, this is all going out there. All the Marvel, all the Disney, all the Star Wars, all the Pixar, and then just the back catalog of other stuff that they own. The only thing that I... Everything I've been curious, and I go and look up, it is there that I was looking for. The only thing that's not there that I was bummed about was Straight Story by David Lynch, which was oh, made with Disney. It wasn't on and there. they own it. They own it, but they didn't put it on there. And I wow. even saw somebody that's on Reset Era said they released the, the full list, and it was so long. And the, like one of the first comments on Reset Era was, we're Straight Story. Yeah. <laughs> and I laughed. It was like, that is. like Somebody would just pick yeah. the one thing. But I was like, I laughed. I was like, oh, that's actually yeah. something I would be curious to have on there. But... Yeah, I mean... And Songs of the South. It's a, it's a no show. They got a little something for everybody. Uh, if you're a parent and you don't want no, your kids that. watching you... T- I didn't hear you say... You don't watch Songs your- of the South that oh. didn't make it in. Uh, did it not? Because they added yeah. in a lot of that old One stuff that had some of that weird high. racist stuff. And they add, like, at the beginning, like, warnings. Like, warning, yeah, this yeah. was made in a different era. I feel like that is a good compromise. Yeah. Some of the stuff, like... They even with uh, the Michael Jackson stuff that was going on, they took off that episode from airing in The Simpsons. They yeah. took that, and I don't think you should do that. I think put the thing that says, "Hey, frick this guy," but here's the episode, yeah. or mm-hmm. here's whatever. If you really feel that way, or the the you know the racist stuff and the undertones and all yeah. the movies that was what was made then. And there's gonna be stuff now. Don't that change we made it. Yeah, don't change it. Be embarrassing to our grandkids. Yeah. Like, wow, you're freaking an idiot. Yeah, that your generation made this. So it's yeah. like. Just put a little warning in the front. It's like, hey, we recognize now. Yeah. So All that being okay. said, um, I'm going to talk about a couple shows from Disney+. Plus. One I knew was going to be on there, and I was going to watch it. And then one that I didn't really know anything about, but I watched some of it, and it's been really fun. So The Mandalorian is a Star Wars show. Um, Baby Yoda. Yeah, there's a Baby Yoda. If you haven't heard, there's a little little Have tiny Yoda man. Um this show for me has been weird, and I'm kind of in a weird place with Star Wars stuff in general, where I'm kind of burned out. Mm-hmm. And I pretty crazy I, for me. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think it's because I'm around people who are burned out, so I'm hearing that people are burned yeah. out. But the whole, like, I like The Last Jedi a lot. I like Solo a lot. But the entire <coughs> internet losing their mind and just hating everything, everything's so cynical around it. It just put me from a place of I liked it to just uh, it has a stink on it. it has a stink on it right now. And honestly, I felt the same way about the Mandalorian. Like I'd say they, I, I would say, yeah, that definitely is a part of it in the Internet and Last Jedi. But man, to me, it's and even Disney has admitted this. I think it's the release freaking schedule of this. Yeah, stuff. oh yeah, it's, and, and that, I'd, I'd is, say that's that is there what too. Me out the most. I'd say that's the most, there. That's there too, definitely. Um, but so like they've been showing trailers for this this year, and I would watch it. It'd be like, I mean, here's my thing with Boba Fett. I think he's more of a meme than he is. Like he's an action figure people play with. He's not a character. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like. And this isn't about him, but, like, this might as well be, hey, we're not using Boba Fett, but this is Boba Fett. You know what I mean? Like, that's it's the same armor, basically. Slightly different. It's the same job. He's a bounty hunter. It's the same. I mean, for God's sake, he freezes somebody in Carbonite in the first ten minutes of the first episode. (laughs) Like, it it is in that lane. Like, that is what it is. It's basically, like, I don't know. It's... It's basically like trying to do a Boba Fett thing without it being Boba Fett, which is fine. Um, but so I just the whole way through with the ads and stuff for this, I was like, man, I'm going to be getting across the finish line to see episode nine. Like this thing's dropping in November. I don't really know, you know, how excited I am. Uh, because the other thing with all these Star Wars shows is it just seems like. I think the movies. only week they're not doing an episode is when episode nine yeah, comes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and and it, but the other thing with all these Star Wars things they put out is like, there's just all these constant callbacks and connections. And here's the guys that did this, and now the, here's the lady that did that, and they're here. And and so I was kind of just, I don't know. I was like, I have friends that are excited to watch it, some best friends, siblings. So I was like, I'm gonna watch this. I'm gonna watch it with my buddies. I hope it's good. I know almost nothing going in, um, and I will say I've enjoyed it. I've been pleasantly surprised. For somebody who's kind of burned out on all the discourse around Star Wars and Solo and the Jedi and all this stuff, honestly, it reminds me kind of like of The Witcher, right? Like, The Witcher games, there's a Witcher. He kind of just goes around. He -hmm. checks stuff out. He does little jobs. He gets a little money. He upgrades his armor. Yeah. He, you know, is part of a little clan of witchers. This guy is a Mandalorian. I don't know a lot about what those were until I play or watch this, but there's just a kind of a group of them. They're like a guild that lives underground, and they just go do bounties. And so it's very awesome aesthetic. It's great cinematography. It's It looks... I won't I won't hyperbolize. It does not look quite the level of a Star Wars movie, but just like any other TV show, can be really good quality. But it doesn't look quite that level. Yeah. The the graphics of like the whatever the creatures. How, how many episodes have you watched? Or is it three? There's four episodes yeah. out, and there's going to be eight. So it's really not a show. Like I I wouldn't even call it like a show in the traditional sense. It's going to be like a mini series at this point. Like I've seen half of what it's going to be, and. There are maybe four characters that have a name. Like, it's not like there's a crew and he's like hanging yeah. out with these people, and there's subplots. Like, there are no subplots to the show. There are no side characters that you're cutting away and you're seeing what they're doing and then you're coming yeah. back. This show is told specifically and exclusively from the perspective of this bounty hunter. Yeah. And the first episode, he is closing out a bounty. And he takes a new bounty, and he flies to where he's going, and he has some adversity, and he gets to the thing. Mm-hmm. The second episode is him making a decision about what he encounters and getting back to the planet he came from. The third episode is only him on that planet yeah. dealing with some stuff with some people he took a job from. Yeah. And the fourth episode is he ran away from that planet, and he's on a different planet, and he meets some people. It's like a side quest, and he's helping them. Like, episode. yeah, like it literally, quest episode. it literally, it feels almost like a video game where like this guy doesn't say a lot. Every scene is with him or with him with other people doing something or moving the mission along somehow. Yeah. 
he encounters the very, very, very cute little baby Yoda that you don't even, it's a mystery too. It's kind of like a mystery. You don't know what he is or where he, what's, but it's kind of all tied in, but it's, it's, there. it's good. Like it's fun. It's, if you're into Star Wars, you like that aesthetic, it's cool. Yeah. But the thing that has impressed me the most about the show really is the freaking like music and the vibe. Like the main theme song of this show feels like you're watching an old 60s Western show. And yeah. it's like, bum, 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 yeah. bum, cool. and like it's got like these weird synths in it too. Like it's the most different sounding music I've seen in a Star Wars. And so. If you like the look of Boba Fett, if you like bounty hunters, if you like that kind of stuff, do not watch the show if you want some crazy story. Yeah. There's really not a lot going on in terms of story. Have you watched this? No. It is extremely <laughs> stripped I don't down. Watch TV, man. That's it is extremely yeah. stripped down. There are not a lot of characters. There is not a lot of subplots. It's kind of refreshing in that way. It's just dude and his little baby Yoda, and they're going and doing something. So. Yeah, cool. I don't know. A good time with it. It's fun. Yeah. To be honest, when this is over, I don't need a second season. I mean, yeah. there, there's not a lot to grab onto in terms of like, I'm so attached. I need to see what happens with this guy. Like, I don't really care. Like, yeah. it's just kind of fun. So, yeah. To, uh, yeah, it's it's good. But it's I wouldn't say it's great. It's nothing that you need to go out and see if you don't care. So, like, cool. you don't want to see it, you're fine. Yeah. I'm watching it with friends. Um, honestly, I was watching it with my friends, and then they had to leave with 20 minutes left in the episode. And I was like, eh, I'll finish it later. Yeah. <laughs> like, I wasn't even like, I'm going to finish this right now. Like, Not that it's bad. It's just not. That's fair. It's just fine. So, it is fully for me. I have no interest watching this show, but it's cool that you're enjoying it. I feel like I am graduating high school with episode 9 and going on to college which is other media Yeah, I, that's how I feel with Star Wars because they really wore me out and in 2027 you want to come back with episode 10 or try something whole new maybe I'll be there like yeah. stop with just pumping this stuff out like pumping out TV shows and pumping out movies it's cool but even I feel like a cynic, like a cynic in all this, but like even the Baby Yoda stuff, as cute as he is, I'm not denying the cuteness of Baby Yoda. I don't. I feel like what is it going to take? That's why I kind of like Last Jedi. Maybe there was that. There was why there's divisiveness. There was a side of people that were going, "Frick yeah!" I think we're like pushing back against like what makes Star Wars Star Wars. Yeah. Can we say frick it to these people and like? Yeah. Kill off some of these characters and move the frick on. That's yeah. what kind of less. Jedi. That's what I like there about was, Last there was, Jedi. There was an underlying current of, of that commenting. Absolutely, they were trying to comment on that stuff, and no doubt it was divisive. Whereas I think stuff even like Mandalorians, like remember Yoda. It feels remember. It, yeah, there is still. Why can't we get away from the ghost of the original trilogy? Yeah, you can do it. it, it that is my main criticism of the show. Is and the the Yoda thing. And I'm sure it's not even Yoda. They but I understand for you, like, that's There's kind of ghost. emblematic. There's a ghost of this, like... Uh. Visually, as much as everything in the show looks great, it's all just stuff you saw in Return of the Jedi. Like, the guys basically looks like Boba Fett. They're running around a planet that kind of yeah. looks like Tatooine, maybe a little more snowy. Like, mm -hmm. they're literally grilling. There's people grilling out on the street, and it's the little weasel guy that sat yeah. next to Jabba the Hutt species and they're eating it. Yeah. And then he goes up to ring a doorbell and the little thing pops out and it's the thing yeah. from Jabba the Hutt's palace that yeah. like, does everybody have the same doorbell as yeah. Jabba the Hutt? Yeah. Does everybody eat the same little creature that you yeah. saw in one movie? Does I, every freaking Mandalorian have to have the same yeah. goddamn helmet? <laughs> like, I just, yeah. I'm with you on that. Like, Last Jedi said, and, and there was some, you know, fan service, but they were like, you know what? Anybody can have the Force. Ben just have to be a Skywalker. Yeah. You know what? Yeah, we're going to just start killing some people off. You know what? The guy you think is the big bad guy, we're going to come off halfway. Yeah. yeah, the guy that's supposed to be the bad guy, he's going to be conflicted. The and, core you know, in like, all this is that they used every single... Okay, you get a new movie this year. get a new show this year. They get whatever. Every chance they've taken, they've just done the same thing. It does... You know what I mean? Like the same... They're, it's a Jedi. We've talked about this before. It's a, a, a bounty hunter. Everybody's a bounty hunter of this or whatever yeah. you said before. Here's my thing. We, we talked about this in the car and, one day. And what if they everybody in these freaking things is either 
a space Nazi, like a stormtrooper yeah. or like a general, or they're a rebel. Yeah. Or they're a Jedi. It's the same story. And then, the the, same and then if you're not in that. that main conflict, you have two options yeah. in this world. You can be a bounty hunter or you can be a smuggler. Yeah. Name somebody besides frickin' yeah. Uncle Owen who is a farmer. <laughs> Name yeah. somebody in this universe that wasn't one of those things. Yeah. There's they played other, any level there of are consequence. There's so many interesting things you can Ewoks. do, and because you've used... Well, they're not people. They're space. They're up, aliens. Man, you've used up the past since 2015. Uh, I didn't hate any... Like, I didn't hate any, actually any of these Star Wars movies that came out, but it's like... it's It almost feels like the same problem we have with Pokemon. Yeah. I think all those Pokemon games are fine, but yeah. it's like you used every single one... Uh, oh, it's yeah, the same I'm imagery. Going, I'm going to basically Pallet Town. It's just called something different. I'm picking my three and if freaking you get, starters. And if you get rid and, of something, and, the fans go nuts. Yeah, and it's like, how long... That's why even now, retroactively, now that I'm older, you can look back, and I even thought it was weird then, but Metal Gear Solid 2 and even Metal Gear Solid 5, they kind of comment on, like, hero worship and, like, getting into, like, a groove. Like, it has to be this way, and fans saying this. It's like, I kind of respect those games even more, what they call Well, yeah, and, 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 and we talked earlier about the prequels, Gotta be honest, man. Yeah. I watched Phantom Menace the other day, or not the other day, but a couple of months ago with, with some friends because we wanted to watch through the older ones yeah. to get ready and we're not going to get through them. But, <laughs> but we watched Phantom Menace. I was like, you know what? I don't feel fatigued watching this, even though there's Jedi yeah. in it. As, yeah, it's got as, pod racing. As it's much, got crap I don't know as anything much as about. I think those movies still suck. They at suck, least, at least, but, let, at least let Last Jedi respect level. They're trying. They had cool ships that yeah. they tried to make look different than yeah. the other one. And I don't know. I need to get off that. But I don't hate Star Wars. It's just you've used every single year to do the same thing. It's like, I'm so burnt. I yeah. don't want to watch Mandalorian. I'm glad if you're enjoying at home, it's like, maybe in a couple of years I'll come back to Mandalorian. Love it. I don't know. But it's like, uh, right now... If you strip away all the 70s Star Wars aesthetic and you strip away the armor and... It's literally, you could tell this story and it would be a 7 out of 10 hitman in New York City finds a baby. Like, that literally, I mean, that would actually be more interesting probably than The Mandalorian. With a baby. Yeah, it just feels like, fine. It's fine. I'm going to finish it. It's fun, but... Uh... Other stuff? Oh, yeah. So I watched... Can, can we lightning round this yeah, stuff? I yeah. hate to move you I, forward, but... Real quick, I watched a show called The World According to Jeff Goldblum. It's just fun. It's kind of like Jeff Goldblum. He just picks a thing, and he just, like, dives super deep into the culture of it. And, like, the first one was about sneakers, which I didn't know anything about. But, like, first he goes to, like, a sneaker shop, and he's like, hey, like, Does what he are go, these? Ooh. Yeah. And he, he, this guy just trolls people. He just trolls people and like they don't realize he's trolling them, but yeah. that's like his thing. Yeah. But then he went to, like a convention and then he got this guy that makes sneakers to make him a pair of sneakers and that's kind of the show. It's fun. I don't know. It's just fun, kind of interesting. Feel like Jeff yeah. Fun. If you don't like him, don't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this show. I hate Jeff Goldblum. That's about it. I watch yeah. some other shows, but I my throat hurts, so I'm done talking. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked a lot. Uh, I want to give one quick. This. It, just like the movie, uh, this is going to be a really quick thing. The Irishman <laughs> could have been longer. That's it. You know, no, no, I, Irish... have, I have a couple thoughts about this. We watched it the together. Irishman. This is going to be my uh, lightning round. If you like Martin Scorsese, I think that kind of world and and Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci and and Al Capino. Al Capino. Al Capino. Al Capino. Al Capino. Bless you. Al Capino. Um. No, seeing all those actors, what feels like could be one of the last time. Like these people are getting old. Like, yeah, they're gonna be acting. That was this is the last stuff. time we'll see them all three together. Yeah, that felt special. It feels like a Scorsese film to the nth degree. I freaking adored this film. Uh, all three and a half hours of it. There is vi- some of the stuff I went in so blind. I didn't even know they're gonna talk about certain things that they talk about. Yeah, like certain oh, yeah. real life events that they talk yeah, about. I, didn't I went know in either. so blind. I was like surprised and shocked. But uh, there is, if you're in that gangster type world and stuff, man, this is just him at one of the best. But and, and, and what really- I wanted to say was is gangster movies are really fun. What I really like about this movie is it kind of, without getting into spoilers, it kind of deconstructs that life. Yeah. Um, in a way I really appreciate it where, I mean, what I've seen like Goodfellas and some of these other movies, they really glorify that life. Like 
this is, you know, money and girls and this doesn't really paint it in that light. Like it paints it as like it's a business. It, it also right out the, the very first thing you see in the film is him older. I mean, that's part of the, why the budget was so big. Yeah. Looking at the film, they had to do a lot of de aging of De yeah. Niro, Joe Pesci, and stuff. They de aged. So and a lot of stuff and... is about aging and becoming what's, old. What's the final result of this life? Yeah. Or, or right off the bat, you're seeing him tell the story of like, well, it's, it's kind of very similar to uh, Once Upon a Time in America. I kind of had those same vibes. Yeah. It's very long as well. Yeah. Like movie. Very, it just Niro, it but. just really was kind of crushing. It's it's. I think this is my favorite De Niro performance I could remember. Yeah. Maybe it's, it's, ever. It's, it's so it's, good. It's good. He's just so unassuming. You totally buy him as this guy that's just kind of a middleman and all of this mob union yeah. madness. And he, there's a scene with him in this movie where he gets on the phone with somebody that, let's just say he's wronged this person and maybe they don't know he's wronged them, but he's on the phone with them. And it is the most like... It's such a good scene. Like, yeah. he just, like, uh, 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 like just the guilt. You can see the guilt. Yeah. You can see the processing. And it's, it's just so... It's these actors so, at their very best. It's yeah. some of the best actors. They're at their the, best. Best interactions. I, 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 so I think good. it's a great movie. Um, my only real weak spot would be Anna Paquin kind of pops up at a certain point, And she plays a character that you see a lot of when the character's really young. And then all of a sudden, she's Anna Paquin. Mm -hmm. And it took me a minute to even realized it was the same character because there's yeah. time jumps. But Anna Paquin doesn't really say anything and we don't really have any moments with her as Anna Paquin's age. It's just kind of... I don't know. I just felt like the arc was set up really well for the character sorry, as a which kid. One was Anna Paquin? Anna Paquin was the daughter. Daughter. Oh, okay. That's what so I was thinking. So they do a great job when when De Niro's daughter is. She plays a crucial role thematically in the film. Yeah. They do a great job I with just setting some sucky. things. Sorry. They do a great job with setting cool up the girl as a kid and certain beats with her dad and with her dad's friends, and then when they do the time jump later, I, I get what they were trying to do, but like. The girl looks nothing like Anna Paquin. You don't really have any moments with Anna Paquin. There's no, like, middle-aged girl of, like, a teenager that really bridges it. And so I just felt like I was 90% in on some of the emotional payoff they did with De Niro's character and the way they ended it. But I couldn't get 100% there because the people he was acting against or what was going on didn't feel like it connected to the beginning of the movie. Just bad casting. I feel like she didn't do anything wrong. It just bad pacing with a certain arc that I felt like could have made this a 10 out of 10, 5 out of 5 movie I would talk about a lot more. I get what they were doing. There are some great sequences in this movie, yeah. but it just didn't tie all the way through for me. Sure. But that's the risk you take when you literally yeah. do as much jumping around as they did. That. I see it a little differently, but I'd be spoiling the movie Yeah, with something that is... Because she doesn't have. A, I will say one. She doesn't have a lot of dialogue. There's something that is said. I think they use it so sparingly. Yeah, I didn't I, need I, I her to say saying. more. I guess I just. I, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. That's where I'm going. It like, still had the impact, and yeah. that ending, and just the way it goes. But I get that. It was like yeah. so. It, it, it was bizarre. They just assumed you would know, yeah. and it just threw me out of the movie. And then yeah. I was like, I don't feel connected to yeah. this iteration of who that is. Okay. But there's a scene. So, like, the last 30 minutes... This movie's almost like a book where you get an epilogue at the end. Yeah. So, like, this is a long movie, but it feels like a three-hour Scorsese movie. Yeah. With a 30-minute epilogue yeah. that you don't normally get with his movies that really shows yeah, the really devastation cool. yeah. of what this can lead to. Yeah. So, there's that, which I thought was awesome. But then the other thing that I loved is there's a sequence of about 20, 25 minutes in this movie. I would say it's the climax of the movie. It's not the end, but it's the climax that it is just so uncomfortable and it takes place across yeah. like it is very uncomfortable. basically like a, a, like a character finds something out in the evening and it follows them through that night that morning yeah. where, how they go around that it day sucks. and it and just what is happening and you, yeah. you you you're like I'm hoping something yeah. maybe won't and it just the way it goes you just feel so sick I don't know yeah. it's tough but we're saying yeah. a lot of things. I, I think you should. I think I would recommend this movie to anybody. I was at yeah. my. I was at a family thing with some family, and I was talking to my Three uncle, and, and yeah. he was talking We're about good. something. I was like, "Dude, you should watch The Irishman. It's good. Yeah. It's not too gory that I feel like parents and stuff couldn't get into yeah, it. There's really not good. a ton of 
Actually, there's no nudity. Yeah. There's not like a bunch of nudity or illicit yeah. sex. There's not a ton of insane violence. There's violence. Yeah. I and am there's not even a ton of language. Up. It's just... Three and a half hours. I say that, but it, I say three and a half hours the same way Dark Knight is three hours. Like, yeah. it, it goes by... Like, no. you're If you're engaged in that type of story and that... If you're I mean, like, kind of mob, if you're type, if you're into that crime mobster kind of stuff, but not like the super violent part, this is what. This is a know. perfect movie for those parents who are like too much cussing or too much sex. It doesn't you, you have, have to that. Watch that. That's it. And he so, will tune in next podcast and tell you all about it. Thank you. You're gonna give me okay. You know what? Frankly, I'm not gonna argue. Hold on. Yeah. I have one last point on this whole Scorsese thing. Do you, were you gonna say something about the Irishman? No. <laughs> you were going to say something so what I was going to say is and then I'll shut up Spielberg Lucas um, uh, Brian De Palma Scorsese and Francis Ford Coppola those yeah. five so like the guy that made Godfather the guy that made Star yeah. Wars the guy that made Jaws Brian De Palma made a bunch of different stuff um, and Francis Ford Coppola made The Godfather they were all best friends yeah. like they were all really close friends like they all watched the first screen of Star Wars together watched the first screen of Godfather together they made they all made their own movies but they all were best friends and showed each other their movies Got their what mo- is that from we, that we all watched that recently I've seen it in a Star Wars documentary I just watched. I but, just watched it in something else. So, so, but it's it's talking about. But they they were really great friends. They all were coming up out of Hollywood at the same time. They all had their own really distinct voice. This movie solidified for me that I think Scorsese is the best out of all of them, mm-hmm. because all those other guys have not had the longevity Scorsese has had. He just made a movie that I watched. And I think this might be his best movie in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. I don't think it is. I think that I put other ones first. But, like, the fact that that's even a conversation. George Lucas ain't this making anything. This guy's very anything. old and still making good stuff. Yeah. yeah. This dude is very old, and he has had longevity and consistency yeah. that George Lucas didn't have. I don't think Spielberg is on that level. Ready Player One, I'm sure, was fun. Yeah. But, like, I he's not making mean. Jaws now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Francis Ford Coppola is doing God knows what. Yeah. I don't even know what Brian De Palma is up to. Like, I, Scorsese, out of those five, it. those 70s renegade filmmakers, he has absolutely stood the I test of time. That. Yeah. True. Well, we've talked a lot. A lot happened. A lot of crazy stuff happened. A busy month. Half Life came back. A new Kojima game. Google Stadia launched. And by next podcast, it'll be gone. <laughs> but we want to end. We've been putting out some great dweeb stuff. I think I'm going to do that soon. But man, there's so much. We're going to be doing so many fun hangouts. Because it's the end of the freaking decade. So we're, we're, I'm pausing on some of the dweeb stuff I'm kind of putting out. Uh, standalone, kind of our music videos we did, mm-hmm. all that. Because we're going into crazy mode. Welcome. You've entered the crazy... This is Christmas. Christmas is coming up. This is Christmas for dweebos fans. <laughs> nice. Really. It really is. Content. We are going to be doing some hangouts of some of our... We're each kind of picking a game of kind of our favorite of the decade. And kind of pick a, a fun one that we can play on a hangout. So we're all doing one. Me, Travis, Jacob. Does it have to be our literal game it of the does, decade? That's what I told him one of earlier. Our games. It, it has to be one. So I will just come out and say mine is going to be The Last of Us. It's going That's one of the games on my list and my favorite of the whole decade. And I'm just going to sit, talk about it. Maybe it's a little bit extended. I don't know. Just talking about why I love The Last of Us. And they got their own that they're going to be playing as well. That'll be... This month, I'm going to put out all the dates. I'm going to be put out reminders on the Dweebo IT Twitter. It's right here. Go there. Follow if you want to figure out when are they going live. I'm going to put some reminders on YouTube as well. You'll see all that stuff when we go live. It's going to be fun. Uh, and then the big enchilada. Well, two big enchiladas. The game freaking awards. Yep. I forgot, I forgot the. I'm putting it on the screen because I forgot the freaking date. Next Thursday. Next Thursday. Next Thursday. It's like December 11th. December 11th. I think. Works. It's definitely December 11th. <laughs> no. Oh, what shoot. is it? The 12th. It's definitely December 12th. Thank you, Jacob. Love you guys. Uh, December 12th. Check it out. We're going to be doing live reactions then. It always lasts 3,000 hours. If you remember, yeah, so, it's, it's a three hour ordeal. Uh, I am telling these guys they did not listen to me. You have to dress up in a suit and tie, hold them to that. We will be doing those live reactions for that, and then, then the biggest of enchiladas. We've had an amazing decade of games, 
An incredible generation. And a good year. We'll still do year yeah. stuff. Yeah, we'll still talk year stuff. But guess what? We've gone through the 2010s. We will be, and we'll have, be having some special guests as well. It's not going to just be us three. You might see Baby Yoda. I don't know. Yeah. But Maybe CP3. Uh, CP3. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. Baby Boba yeah. Fett. You know what we need to have as a category? Maybe Palpatine. Hardware of the generate or hardware of the decade. Oh. Yeah, or streaming platform. You know what would make it? Google generation. Stadia. Yeah. But we're going to be I talking our favorite him. games of the decade, favorite movies of the decade, TVs, everything. We're going to go nuts. We're going to go absolutely bonkies. So thank you for watching. Keep your eyes peeled for all that stuff. And remember, it's hitting. Tomorrow is in your hands. Is that the little thing that goes bleep, 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 You have to play and find out? Bleep, 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 bleep,